Hello and welcome to the deepest dive on Final Fantasy VII Rebirth from MinMax. MinMax is a place about games, friends, getting better. My name is Ben Hansen, coming to you from the MinMax studio, joined by one Ronnie. Hello! Run, run, Ronnie. Hey! Joined, hey, well, well, great, early, <laughs> joined by Grant. Hi. And joined by Ross, the Star Wars guy fund. Hello, I'm glad to be here. And I think you invited me because I have a single syllable R name that is chantable. That's hey. exactly right. You're <laughs> here, man. Ross, Ross, Ross. Uh, you might remember Ross from a th ton of Max spoilers we've done on Min Max's channel or the deepest dive on Indiana Jones and the Fate of Atlantis. Uh, one of our smallest, deepest dives, but one of the proudest. <laughs> I so, because every once in a while we get messages on Patreon of people being like, why don't you do retro stuff? And it's like, dude. We did Indiana Jones, The Fate of Atlantis from 1992, and you weren't there! You didn't show up for us, <laughs> so I have no shame. But thanks for swinging around for Final Fantasy VII, Ross. I'm glad to be here. So, here's the deal. If you watch the deepest dive on Final Fantasy VII Remake, which we did four years ago, uh, it was Ronnie That's incredible. over yeah. Skype. Uh, yep. It was disastrous over Skype. Yep. Grant over Skype. Mm. Uh, Kyle and Jeff, I'm over Skype. Uh, their schedules wouldn't allow them to be on this deepest dive. Uh, but we're in the bag for Final Fantasy VII in a big way. We, yep. It's... My favorite game, mm -hmm. Ronnie. It's yep. okay. It's up favorite with Ocarina. Game. I know it's uh, no, 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 no. Favorite game. Okay. Yep. Ocarina's trash. You're saying <laughs> trash. Wow. Just, yeah. <laughs> and Grant, it's one of your favorites. I know we've had this discussion a thousand yeah. times. Ross, you're a big RPG guy. Yep. And you like Final Fantasy VII a lot, but you're not one of these wild diehards. Yeah, I, it's ya? a top three Final Fantasy for me, which is a pretty which one though. What's that? Is it number one, two, or three? <laughs> number three. Number three. Okay. Ooh, that would be awesome. Be like, it's my, it's in my top three. It's number one, it's but number it's in my one. top three. <laughs> All right, real quick. Number one. Uh, six. Number two. Nine. That makes you nice. cool. That makes yeah. you cool. It, yep. Yeah. There are people in the comments that would be like, Ross. You're my main man. Yeah. yeah. Nine rules. Forget about all that. Uh, this is the deepest dive. We are breaking apart Final Fantasy VII Rebirth into five discussions. Five. We're breaking it all oh up. Boy. So it's a game club discussion. If you're watching this, we want you to participate, and we'll get more into that in a bit. This first discussion is covering Cloud's Past in Chapter 1. We're only focusing on Cloud's Past in Chapter 1. Everything else in Chapter 1 we'll cover on next week's episode of The Deepest Dive. We're, we're focusing on Cloud's Past, specifically Cloud's Past stuff that's in the demo and a little bit beyond the demo, just so we can really have a nice chunk focusing on Cloud's Past here and whatnot. So, other big thing, um, we did a poll and, gosh, maybe like 40%? Gosh, I don't know, numbers, probably around 40% of people uh, that are playing along with us um, have not played the original Final Fantasy VII. Wow. Which is awesome. We love having new people jump in. So we're not going to spoil anything about the original Final Fantasy VII in this discussion about Cloud's Past or anything else in Rebirth. What are you smirking <laughs> about? <laughs> and the smirk! No, 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 no. Now, I'm just excited. I'm excited to, uh, to, 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 to get into it. <laughs> there's, a, there's a lot to get into. Uh, but we wouldn't try and be too cheeky. Uh, here's the thing as well. Uh, this is a five-part game club discussion. You can directly support a ridiculously long effort like this because ain't no other outlets doing this. No. no other outlets gathered in a studio to talk about Rebirth in this extensive of a way because the goal is to give this game the discussion it deserves and to create the best, most thorough discussion about Rebirth on the internet. But we do that thanks to your support. So if you go to patreon.com slash minmax with two N's, uh, jump in even at that $2 tier, you can submit comments every single week on Patreon, and we will read your thoughts on Rebirth along the way. We're turning this single-player game into a big collective hive mind to really ring it for all it's worth, all the enjoyment contained within, right? Um, so you can do that if you want to join it directly, or if you just want to support the show. But you can also unlock the podcast version of The Deepest Dive, all of Rebirth Deepest Dive, the Deepest Dive on Indiana Jones, The Fate of Atlantis is still in that podcast feed. Uh, you also get the Deepest Dive on Final Fantasy VII Remake, which was a whole 12-hour experience we had years and years ago. That's in there as well. Uh, you get the commentary track for Advent Children that we did as well. There's a ton of stuff in that bonus podcast feed, and that's at the $5 tier if you go to patreon.com slash minmax with two N's. But here's the, here's the kicker for everybody, because <laughs> mm. it's like, hey, you can... Join or support the deepest dive with your comments, right? Mm -hmm. You can unlock the podcast version. Oh. But what if there's an extra thank you opportunity? Go on. And we have one. Mm. Thank you to the fine folks at uh, Sabotage Studio for supplying us with a bonus opportunity. If you jump in to patreon.com slash minmax with two N's at any tier from now until March 1st, 
you get a copy of Sea of Stars on Steam. What? Oh, that's The fun. fantastic throwback RPG from 2023. It was on MinMax's 210s list, technically number six, I think it landed at. Ross, um, I know you're a huge fan of Sea of Stars. Yeah, fantastic game. One of the most beautiful pixel art games ever uh, created, probably. Yes. Ah, music incredible. incredible. It's got everything you would love of a... Uh, 16-ish bit era RPG. Yeah, beloved. So here's how it works. Um, we have 50 Steam codes to give away for Sea of Stars. Just wow. Steam. So do not expect a code if you go to patreon.com slash minmax with two N's and you look at the total number of supporters on that first page. If that number is more than 5,107, that's the cutoff. But if it's below that, then jump in and we will DM you on Patreon and you will get a code for Sea of Stars on Steam. Thanks to Sabotage Studio and the Messenger. But hey, thanks Sabotage for supporting the deepest. Thank you, Sabotage. All right. <laughs> a killer smattering. <laughs> Dynamite smattering. Uh, okay. Again, we're just talking about Cloud's Past here. Thanks everybody who submitted comments over there on Patreon. Uh, hundreds and hundreds of comments. I was just going to ask, how many do we get? Uh, well, it's not, we do have like a Google Doc yeah. right now. It's like a shared Google Doc. It's not like a specific number that I have. I probably should have done that math, but there was a ton. Hmm. But the point is, um, people wrote in about everything possible for Cloud's Past. There's 14. Here. There's 14 <laughs> questions. <laughs> hey, thanks, Sabotage. <laughs> um, question is, what was the most common comment? Uh, what did people write in the most about for Cloud's Past in Final Fantasy VII Rebirth? Which um, <sighs> Mako, Mako Vacuum. Mako Vacuum. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, I'm going to say something about like um, the just exploration of Nibelheim. Okay. Ross? I'm going to say... Oh, I'm trying not to spoil stuff, but... That's uh, diabolical. <laughs> that's I good. didn't that count good. that. I do think that probably technically is the most common comment, and we just snipped all that stuff out of there because this is a fun section to talk about. If you know the original Final Fantasy VII, I understand. There's, it's an interesting one to talk about. Uh, but no, the most common comment was people talking about in our pitch video for The Deepest Dive, People talking about how much they loved Grant's Coheed and uh, Cambria posters on the wall. Oh, was that <laughs> multiple it? people writing about that? <laughs> oh, excellent, yeah. excellent. And not his squat posture and form. <laughs> we actually got a perfect. lot of comments talking about just bashing that posture. It, it <laughs> was fierce. I, I was trying to recreate, you know, cloud, <laughs> cloud <laughs> janky. Cloud 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 smart. Uh, no, most common comment. That's so smart. These developers put it in there. The piano. Everyone is losing yeah. their minds over the piano, and it's yeah. like, yeah, you wonder if it's worth putting that level of production value into a piano, even for like the demo, yeah, oh, you know, yeah, but it's like, absolutely. yeah, you know what? That's sticky. There's people who played that for two hours, they said, just yep. going through all those different options on the piano, which is cool. Smart right. on them. How much time did you, each of you guys spend on the piano? God, where? I can't even think of the number that big. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've technically played this section three times. Okay. Um, so if I add all of that up, I'd say a solid 21 minutes. Seven minutes. <laughs> Twelve? Twelve? Probably just five. Go! But, but I yeah. did appreciate yeah. it. It's yeah. the deepest dive on the game, not on a pianist. Yeah, but also I appreciate how long and careful Cloud is to carefully sit down at the piano and yeah. lift up the cover. That it, he does feel like classically him. trained a He's little bit. He's very respectful like, of yep. that instrument. It's yeah. the only time Barrett's ever respected him. <laughs> hey, well-rounded man! Like, this is what you need to get in the hearts and minds of a team. Is like, yeah. But this is a lot of funny things about Cloud's past. Is like, If you just funnel everything to the fact that Cloud is telling everybody this, it's the yeah. funniest thing imaginable. Yeah. Be like, and then I sat down on that piano and yeah. tickled those ivories and mm -hmm. yeah. the house melted down. Like how <laughs> intricate could he get to the yeah. point that the party members are like, Cloud, you're really good at piano. Like, he's just <laughs> describing how good he that, was at that piano. Is true, that is true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then D came after C, but not before, just a touch of E flat. <laughs> you can't say you went to town on that thing and then, you know, not back it up. Yeah, yeah. he does say it's, <laughs> that's, that's, that's it's only one way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then I went to town on it. <laughs> it looks like. Uh, all right. We have a lot to get to. Um, Ronnie? Yeah. How are you feeling about chapter one of Rebirth here, man? Oh, I'm loving it. Loving it. L loving it, loved it. You said... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You said yeah. that Klaus Fast was like your favorite stuff from the original game. Yeah, it was. Like, I, I do remember playing through, like, when I was a kid, I would uh, just, like, load up and, and watch, like, Cloud's Past, like, play through that part. And I would imagine that that's because, like, there's, there's a few cool FMVs in there. Uh, yeah. There mm -hmm. are... Mm -hmm. 
you get to play as te- kind of play as Sephiroth. You get to play. So in the original game, he wasn't controllable, but you were but in you the would, battle. You would be yeah, yeah in a battle and you like get to see his cool stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I think you could even like go Jason. into your menu and like still see like his like character portrait. That was enough. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, I played <laughs> to sustain you for the rest of your life on pure happiness, Grant. I think. It was, <laughs> yeah, it was, it's still working to this day. <laughs> Every time I get blue and plaid, I, I think about just that character portrait in the menu. Sephiroth. And then in this version, they don't even let you change his materia. I know. Well, they didn't even let you... Well, there, there was a few things that they wouldn't let you change and a few things they did let you change. Uh, but nothing in terms of, like, Sephiroth stuff. But it was cool just to kind of, like, see, like, uh, he had the Masamune, and you can actually like see his uh, Masamune. Mas- Masamune. Thank you. Sorry. That's what I said. And, uh, no, no, no mistakes. No mistakes. <laughs> and uh, you could actually see like his uh, character stats, which I thought was kind of interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah that was fun. By the way, pop quiz. Yeah. Uh, um, Sephiroth is uh, thirty-seven years old. You got it. You got it. No, uh, Sephiroth uh, beats all of the the uh, traits and attributes of Cloud. Except one category. Oh, excellent. There's one thing that Cloud has a higher stat in. Charisma. Heart. <laughs> <laughs> is, is luck one of them on there? I don't even know. It was luck. Hey, really? It was luck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is yeah. kind of fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He doesn't yeah. need it. That's how good he is. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah luck is just, um, what's the phrase about luck? Luck be your lady tonight. That's oh. the one. Yeah. Uh, Ross, how are you feeling about Chapter 1, man? Uh, I loved it. I thought it was a perfect way to start this game. Yeah, it um, really was. Yeah, because, uh, yeah, you've got the framing device of Cloud telling it as a story to his friends. Right. Right? And they're breaking in every now and then with comments and stuff like that, which I loved. I mean, that detail alone. That, yeah. So Grant and I went back and we played through um, a good chunk of Rebirth's content in the original. We streamed it. It's on Max's channel if you want to check it out. And I forgot how much of that kind of interrupting the narrator was in the mm, original. I remembered yeah. a little bit of that, really? but so much of it, like, you know, Barrett just it early was a lot on of Barrett, being like, hey, hold, hold yeah, the yeah, phone yeah, here, buddy. Yeah, what are you talking about? Yeah. Like, it's almost one for one how much it's, they interrupt it in right. Rebirth. And it's it such a, a smart, fun idea. Yeah, yeah. It was a very faithful recreation of that yeah. from the original. And it, it is kind of muddy in my mind. Um, it was fun going back to see just how close it was. Yeah, kind of yeah. it is a lot more one to one than I thought, except for yeah. some a lot. really smart decisions. I think story wise, okay. yeah. that they're making. Yeah, it doesn't it happen kind of, like, in Calm through. Uh, in the original one too. I haven't yep. played it since '98. So, oh really? Yeah, oh, you're, honestly, I'm so glad you're on this deepest dive because yeah. there's yeah. been a lot of people being like, we need somebody who isn't head over heels with Seven. We right. need the Jeffum equivalent. So if you could channel both Kyle and Jeffum <laughs> and just right. impersonate their silly voices. All right, I'll come up with some rant uh, for the Jeffum. <laughs> the other thing about Skull and Bones, <laughs> or my name isn't Mark <laughs> uh, But But yeah, it's uh, starting out with this is so good because you get the important backstory uh, between Cloud and Sephiroth. I think yeah. you need that as like a solid footing in, especially in like this three game series, which is going to be so, you know, so much more hours put into this than just the original game. If you were to play through it, right. yeah, it, you need like that grounding to be like, okay, we're wandering, wandering around the world, but um, you know, we, we know what the deal is with Sephiroth and Cloud and why they hate each other and why, you know. Yeah. And now the thrust of the story is going to be, we need to go find Sephiroth. And to have the yes. story open with, here's why he's a bad guy. Because I remember, yeah. I went back and listened to the Deepest Dive on Remake that we did. What a hoot that was. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> um, but going back and listening to that, it was so fascinating because both Jeffum and Kyle, people who hadn't played Seven before, their takeaway was like, look, the end of Seven Remake, there's a lot we can get into and we have and we sure, will. Sure, yeah. yeah. But they were just like, I... I have no idea who Sephiroth is. I don't know why I should care. I don't know why he's evil. I haven't really seen him do that much that makes me personally hate him. And yeah. Which feels like a fair criticism. I mean, like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, the original game, that was three and a half hours of content versus a, you know, a, a full game, full, right? hour game. No, yeah. three and a half hours true. of content with like a blood yeah. trail from Sephiroth and that's about it. And, yeah. that's, yes. and that's what we got. Like he was, he was myth at that point in time. In fact, like you didn't see him. When was the first time that you actually see him? Uh, On the at, boat. It's on the boat. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, so that is that is a huge thing is just to like start this game on that solid footing of like, you know, I think we we theorized that this is what it was gonna be starting <clears> with. It's kinda like a flashback. And it's it's right. so smart to start not with the walk to calm. Because you it's tough though, and this is too much design talk. We're really amateur game designers, but no. No, but like you want that moment of like Oh my God, the world of Final Fantasy VII, it's so much bigger than I thought. It goes way beyond Midgar. This is incredible. Yeah. And you have that leaving Midgar in the original game. Yes, you do. But they're mm-hmm. like, well, 
but Cloud's Pass is the perfect entry point, and it'd be weird to be like, look at everything. Now look at this. You right. know what I mean? And yep. so it's yep. a really smart That's idea, I think, for like the end of Intergrade to have just like, all right, we're yes. in the truck going exactly. over to Column, so we can just hit the ground running in yep. this, and it's going to show you awesome stuff. And we have received your memo that Sephiroth is popular. Um, if mm-hmm. you played Remake, we're shoving him in every corner. Every time Cloud walks past a window, Sephiroth's like, hello, just <laughs> jumping up, right? And so they do have like, we can open this game with. Sephiroth being literally the first person you control is such yeah. an awesome idea. Yeah. yeah, very true, very true. Yeah. Uh, I think Barrett even jumps in at one point in this too and says that Sephiroth doesn't seem like such a bad guy or something. Right, yeah. which I yeah. really like, appreciate. Because yeah. Yeah. that was also used as kind of like the moment for them to say like, okay, so everything that you're saying so far makes him sound like a really stand-up guy. So <laughs> what happened? Like, like yeah. Red was like, I love him. Yeah. Yeah. I, I thought it was weird. <laughs> Barrett's so like, like, we gotta get to I the fireworks him. factory here soon, Cloud. <laughs> right, yeah. speed it along. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like very supportive and nurturing man. I don't, yeah. I don't understand. Did <laughs> you skip the part about the G key and just kind of get to that stuff? <laughs> <laughs> but I also think starting with this is such an interesting way to connect it to remake in that like well both games are going to open with Mako reactors you know just like kind of like yeah. a focused Mako reactor run and sure. I think it's such a weird happy accident yeah like, yeah, yeah. now Fantastic they're going to find a way for part three to open with a Mako which I guess no no they're not gonna <laughs> <laughs> they'll just amateurs <laughs> throw you in the start of money. don't you want to hear another version of this awesome music I bet you do <laughs> Um, so should we do a little prelude stuff? Hang on, wait a second. Yeah. Other Mako reactors outside of Nibelheim and, uh, Well, Midgar. we don't want to get too much into future stuff for people. No, I know, but I'm just wondering, are there any? Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, hey, Ian Savino writes in and says, I'm a bit worried that this one will lean too heavily into classic fan service. Is a negative comment on Patreon to kick it off? No. And I'm curious how you all are coming to the game mm. yourselves. Have you been avoiding conversations around Rebirth altogether or basking in that juicy pre-launch discussion? Thank you, Ian, for supporting us on Patreon and submitting a comment. Um, coming in completely blind, I feel like. like in terms yeah. of just like having conversations about this, I, I tuned out. I don't know exactly like when it was. There was probably one trailer a few months ago that it's just like, I think we've had the conversation of just like, that's enough. Like, I'm not, this is not going to get better. I feel like you and Grant a while ago were like, we're yeah, done. Yeah, 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 I think so. And then like, uh, through this, uh, we, no, we haven't had a chance to, this is the first time that we're going to unpack this conversation. Um, I haven't talked to anybody about this. Thank so. God. Um, yeah, I've I've skipped all other podcast discussions about Rebirth because I'm so scared sure. about spoilers. If you listen to the Min Max show, you probably know how obnoxious I can be about like, just shut up, just stop talking about anything. Um, and so I've been trying to go in as completely blind as possible. I did, yeah. you know, I went to a preview event where I played the first one and a half chapters of the game, right? So this right. is me kind of going back through that again. So that was a little yeah. bit of a spoiler. And I watched the state of play. But the entire time I was watching Sony State of Play, I was reminding my own brain, remember to forget this. Remember to forget this. <laughs> wow, and I'm yeah, happy yeah. to say, I don't remember too much. I remember good, being good. overwhelmed by how much they show, but I've kind of forgotten some of the finer details. Sure. I'm glad I didn't watch the State of Play, because that was the reaction I heard coming From out of it. From a lot of was people. That everybody was yeah. like, wow, was that everything in the game? Yeah. yeah. And I'm glad that I don't know if it is or if it isn't. It's a, it's a weird spot to be in, because I know the game and like nothing yeah. nothing they could show me is really going to throw me for the biggest loop but something that I still just want to be unsullied by it so yep. yeah right. I've, I've been yep. steering clear of everything and in terms of like I guess I, I still don't have a good idea of, of like where this is really going to end like right. I, I've heard I've heard things but I, I still like, like I like where I'm at right now where it's like yeah that makes sense and I really don't know so I'm going to keep it there yeah. yeah. Uh, Gavin C. writes in on Patreon. They say, this is my most anticipated game ever, and I'm wow. almost equally excited for the deepest dive. That's very sweet. Aww. That's crazy. Um, yeah. Aaron Waltz writes in and says, as someone who only played Remake, uh, who only played Remake, and only because of MinMax, uh, thank you, by the way. Wow. Yeah. And I loved every second of it. I was really nervous if part two would work for me. Uh, if being such a divergence from the linearity of the first. Yeah. However, I can't believe how invested I am in just the opening of Rebirth, thanks to the demo. At least in this yeah. opening section. For me, audibly gasping, gasping when Sephiroth's origin was revealed, to the actual chills I got from the close-up when the village was burning, I can't wait to see what comes next. Thank you, Aaron. I love uh, having having new folks jump in to yeah, experience absolutely. all that stuff. Some That's people fun. are really cramming a lot in here, which is fun to see. It's it, 
I, I didn't really think about it, but we suppose we have people that are writing in that weren't alive when the first game came out. Oh, yeah, sure, like, yeah. Because they're like adults in their mid-20s now, which is weird. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's cool. Yeah. It's good. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's awesome. Yeah. Well, Grant, yeah. it's our time to return to the planet. Let the, <laughs> let the new ones <laughs> come. Oh, I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm getting ready here. <laughs> we'll get into that later. Uh, Furby Factory uh, writes in and says, I feel like the emotions shown outside the flashback in the Calm Inn are just great. Barrett's lively interjections are, are particularly favorite. I cannot yeah. wait to see where this goes. I'm very happy to go into the journey again with these characters. Uh, that is that is the fun thing. And that's something that I know if you're not a big Final Fantasy VII fan, you're probably annoyed by hearing super fans on the podcast like me just be like, no, these are like my best friends. Like, <laughs> my childhood friends that I get to hang out with again. And just like seeing yeah. the level of fidelity of like Red 13. How old are you guys again? I think I'm uh, 22. 22. Uh, we're, <laughs> sixth grade, I guess. You know, yeah, okay. yeah, so, yeah sixth, sixth, seventh grade. But I, I think like Th- 13? in terms of being a super fan, like how many video game franchises would you say that just like, I can't like reasonably look at this from an objective standpoint because I'm so nostalgic about it. Like, how many franchises would you put on that list? I would imagine for you, Ben, it'd be pretty dang low. It's Yeah, it's not too many. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so that's why I just... This is a larger discussion, but that's also just why I feel so lucky. Like, I was talking yeah, to totally. the Dan and Bianca record about a little bit of just, like, it feels like I chose correctly for this to be my favorite game. Right. To have square, poor... We don't know the budget. I, don't, yeah. I would imagine... Just the music alone. Uh, north of eight hundred million dollars into the total oh three-part remake, <laughs> going into this thing, like mm-hmm. yeah. everybody, you should be so blessed to get one incredible high production value oh, it's remake incredible. of yeah. your favorite game, and the fact that we're getting three, yeah. like it's it is stupid. Uh, and so spoiled I, is the right word for it, yes. and and it's still like a kind of a, it's still kind of an understatement too. Right. It just it it almost feels unprecedented in a way to just like. Favorite game to now three, like yes, extreme, uh, <laughs> extremely expensive uh, uh, remakes. Ultimately, yeah, I mean, like Resident Evil two and four. But I mean, yeah, those were still mm-hmm. roughly the same length as the original games, not blown out in a way like right, these, but, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Beto's burrito writes in on that front over there on Patreon. They say, I paused for a few minutes at top of the water tower to soak it all in in Nibelheim. The combo yeah. of the evocative reworked. Uh, Nibelheim theme when those drums kicked in in that theme Mm -hmm. yep come on yeah Uh, he played for us uh, I'd love to because it was something like this and then it's the C chord and then it's E (laughs) soft sunset glow and the fantastical mountain landscape really hit me with how special these unlimited budget games are yeah (laughs) it's like having a master chef make the most expensive version of your favorite meal wonderful mm-hmm. yeah uh-huh. speaking of that landscape above Nibelheim did yeah. you guys know did you look up and notice that you can see the reactor looming over the town when you're standing in oh, the square I don't know I, yeah, I got, it's really cool I got like yeah I got distracted by just how cool the mountains look but I don't think yeah. I actually noticed the reactor that's actually that's that is good. the thing it's like yeah, yeah I was looking at the mountains too because it's like it, the be- looks amazing in the original they're just full on Tim Burton mountains and the fact mm-hmm. that they keep right. that intact yeah, like, no, I know. they're going to be weirdly spiky yeah. mountains uh, yeah. in this experience but uh, by the way did you guys so uh, graphics or performance which mm. ones which, where'd you go uh, is it, does it default to graphics it defaults to graphics it does graphics graphics, yep. graphics. graphics. okay uh, which yeah. is funny because in, like in remake it was just it, for me it was a no brainer I would go to performance yep. because I saw no difference between graphics and performance oh interesting and same TV I presume and yeah, same TV. Yeah. And in this one, uh, I see a big difference. It's it's yeah. huge. Yeah, I mean, yeah. there's a lot of great stuff to get into, but I mean, it does come up a lot. Like, you know, I would always go performance as well, but I jumped to it. And I was like, I, this is the first time I'm like, I can't yeah. do yeah. it. Yeah, I it just looks a little smudgy. Uh, Spencer Bertine yeah. wrote in saying, "Sorry, gotta get this out of the way. Yeah, let's just get out of the way, uh, <laughs> and I'll let it uh, sleep for the remainder of the dive." Sure. Performance mode is absolutely atrocious and it really bums me out. Hmm. The game looks incredible and I really don't want to spoil the experience with extremely fuzzy visuals, but it's yeah. also pretty tough to play this type of action game at 30 <laughs> FPS. I think I'll be sticking with the graphics mode, but this does make me wish for the PC release ASAP. Yeah, I can totally understand that. Yeah, sure. you're totally right. And somebody, we were, I was streaming the Rebirth demo and somebody's like, I just wish there was like the mode that Spider-Man 2 has where you can play it at like 40 frames per second or something. You know, oh, sure, find sure. a good middle ground. Yeah. Is, yeah. Are we one is thirty and one is sixty? I'm guessing. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And I, I tell you, like, 
if you ask me the moment that I, I switch it, I'm like, this is unbelievable. And like 15 <laughs> minutes later, I'm like, I don't notice a difference. Yep. It's so quick for me. But yep. yeah, yeah. I'll, it, I'll switch it, but I think my eyes might just be dumb. Or I, 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 I would know. just I'm try just, it. I'm unbothered by you'll it. Note, you'll notice a change. And then I, I would say just like, look off in the distance a little bit and you're just going to notice a little bit of like a lot of smudginess hmm. and maybe that'll change um, when the release comes out maybe, yeah, maybe they'll it's have possible. a patch that'll fix it sure. yeah. I think they've already released one in there but, um, that said like there are so many moments in this where you know eh, maybe not in gameplay necessarily but still like the in-engine stuff when they just have a close-up of a face and I think it looks so much better than Remake just seeing like a close-up of Tifa's right. face or Sephiroth's yes. face it's like yes. Jesus Christ yes. Yes. I mean, it looks yeah. so good I put the last one on PS on a PS4 Pro I think okay yeah because yeah I suppose I, I played it on a just a regular PS4 yeah, yeah, yeah. Same. the old jet engine yeah uh, let's see we have of course people rating in I wonder what that is but yeah, you're totally right no, sorry Excuse for what <laughs> the, the faces they look they look incredible they do look, like I, yeah. I, yeah I just like put a pause on like just looking at like Sephiroth's face and it's just like I just had one of those moments yeah, where bet like you, I, I did I just <laughs> I just realized like it, it felt so real that I was just like waiting for the for him to just like dart his eyes towards me or something like that, you know? it's, like, it's like weird one, one cat eye to yeah, dilate, just dilate like, in your direction <laughs> When I say nighty night, Cloud, I'm talking about you, Remy. <laughs> night. You. I was going to say, when that moment happened, I was like, this is Ben's favorite part of the demo. But he goes, night. It is. <laughs> they know exactly what they're doing. Like, people like Sarah Pazorski panting like a puppy dog over how hot stuff Roth is. It's like, they just know their audience. Hook, line, and sinker. Even, like, when they have their big synergy move, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, um, my God. Roth, and it's just, it's a Pantene Pro V commercial. Yeah. to him's basically licking each other's faces <laughs> they <laughs> flick their hair around yeah. hell yeah old Thirst Town Hansen over there <laughs> yeah. hey don't get me started on my thugs pause pause <laughs> uh, Captain Cobblepot writes in they say by the way hey these comments they're just suggestions if you all are feeling something let her rip I kind of want to sure. move through it you know somewhat chronologically and whatnot, yeah yeah but, yeah okay right. uh, Cap- well you're the one that just kept on you know reading so, so anyways <laughs> when do we get back to Zangan Let's talk about Zangan. <laughs> well, we got to talk about the the soldier van ride yes. to start out with, right? Because that must be how soldiers are deployed. Yeah, that's true. They take him there in a big van. <laughs> yeah. They stand in the back of it. <laughs> job, of, job of a lifetime. Yeah. yeah. You can see, and it seems like they're going on a lot. Like, oh, it's another stupid Turk mission. Right, guys. right. Turk missions all over the world of Prophecy <laughs> 7, just from stupid vans. Yeah. One, one. Did and you then I want to talk about the mayor. Did you guys all do squats while they were in the van too? Or is that oh just, yeah. Or is that just me? Oh, we gotta do the squats. <laughs> gotta do those squats. Gotta mirror all that yeah. stuff. He said, rain it in. He's like, no can do. That's <laughs> the line that absolutely killed me. Yeah. I so Cloud is being like unnaturally nice to those uh are they security guards? What oh, are right, they called? Right, 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 right. right. Security you officers? want to say soldiers, but yeah, not but soldiers. Obviously soldiers. you can't say, call them that. Yeah, Shinra so, yeah. grunts. Yeah, the grunts. And the one of them has is like car sick. Yeah. And yeah. Cloud is not giving that the amount of attention that he should. As somebody <laughs> whose kindergartner was just car sick a oh, couple sure, weeks sure. ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to do whatever true. you can to prevent that from happening, Cloud. <laughs> but look, he's like, okay, what? what is this guy going to do? He's going to shoot at some... You know, mutated freaks on the mountain. Meanwhile, I've got Sephiroth next to me, like the world's greatest soldier. Right. Like, I don't even yeah. need these other goons. Yeah. They're basically there just to like keep Tifa. I mean, they do have guns, but back. you know. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> guns. Yeah, and He's... if he pukes in the back of the van, that's a net loss. <laughs> that, yeah. is yeah. that is true. That is true. Cloud's never had motion sickness either, so he can't really sympathize. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, Captain Cobblepot writes in and says, I really enjoyed that intro scene to a not as cool as he thinks he is Cloud. Seriously, the right. cutscene in the back of the truck really changed my perspective of Cloud as a series newcomer. In Remake, he seems so cool. <laughs> the Nibelheim portion really highlights Cloud's eagerness as a first soldier. He's a bit cocky, stretching, squatting, <laughs> and just feels uh, and just feeling like a cool dude to be on a mission with Sephiroth. Additionally, he later tries to show off for Tifa as the mission continues, taking Big Bugs head on. Yeah. How young was Cloud? Because he looked the same age but acted like a 15-year-old. Uh, I think that's about when he was. He's he like 16, 16, 17, yeah. yeah, 16 years old. Yeah, yeah. and so maybe it's because I'm old now, but I like never thought about the angle of Cloud being a child soldier. Uh, no pun intended. Right. You know, and I don't think that's necessarily something that the right. storytellers want you to like spend a lot of time thinking about. I mean, 
mean, other than that, it makes yeah. Shinra bad, I guess, that they are conscripting 14 year olds and, right. and turning point. them into soldiers. Yeah. And also, like, when I first played the game, I was 16. So yeah. I was like, oh, 16, that's an age that people do really cool things. So, <laughs> right. Yeah. That's when you save the world at <laughs> yeah, 16, yeah. I think. Exactly. Or you just <laughs> fart and fail your driver's exam if you're Ronnie over here. <laughs> Simultaneously. Six times. Right? Six <laughs> times. It's not because of the driving, it's the fun. Primarily. <laughs> just can't handle it. It's a 90 degree back turn. Just, just and the farting. It gets me gassy. I can't help it. A lot of people wrote in about Cloud's relationship with his mom. You got a perfect 90 degree yes. turn. Yes. <laughs> farting. Um, and that's what it made me think of like with Cloud's mom. Everyone's like, why is he such a dick to his mom? But I was like, he's 16 years old yeah. and he's but going he's home. he's also not necessarily, he's, I don't, Feel like he was like a he's, he's a pretty distant he's, he's, he's just, just like he's a teenager like, yeah he's a teenager just like i don't know he, he's just just all the girls leaving you alone or they, I, I i wish they what, what did she, she said, say i again? bet they're wrapping their tongue around you like a snake is what she said <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> like a big midgar serpent yeah, yeah, yeah. he's so surly about it uh <laughs> he's yeah, just like, like moms oh they're always saying nice things to you jeez yeah <laughs> I uh, know. She's like, you need uh, an older woman, someone mm-hmm. who will call you a silly goose. Yeah. Uh, are, they, are they feeding you okay? Right. Yeah. Which is, it's, Shut up, mom. It, it's itself a remake of the scene that was in remake uh, because they had that exact scene, if you remember, like, I think. Mm, I yeah, they did. Yes, out. It's right. when you go and you're on your way, I think, to. You're in Aerith's house. Isn't it? I feel like like when you're when you're kind of like There's chatting a with. There's flashes. Yeah, maybe is that, that is it. Yep, yep. That's exactly Sounds it. Right. Yeah. yeah, good call. Um, yeah, that's right. I was thinking because it flashes back to Nibelheim and the water tower scene when you're on your way to um, Jesse's house. Mm. Okay. Um, mm-hmm. But then it flashes, that's yeah, when you're in yeah. Era's house, then it shows that scene because of, that's where it's Claudia right. saying, you need an older woman, someone that'll call you a silly goose. Yeah. <laughs> All that mm. stuff. Um, a quick question, says Brad Grenz on Patreon. They say, quick question, why is Cloud's mom so hot? Come on. Mm-hmm. She's a beautiful woman, and we need to respect her. <laughs> you can see the family resemblance there, right? It's, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, 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 it's much, much like the stri- how the Cloud line. looked great in a dress. Mm-hmm. Cloud's mom would look great mm-hmm. in mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. weird bulky armor. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Poofy pants. Shoulder Mar- pads with bolts on them. <laughs> The bolts. <laughs> Marshall Banana. I wish they opened up Cloud's closet at home and it was just a whole bunch of shoulder pads <laughs> with bolts on it, but like for different outfits, like his swimsuit has bolts on it. Yeah, was it weird seeing Cloud with two shoulder uh, armor pad thingies? It threw mm, me off. Yeah. I tried to shut off my PS5. <laughs> Marshall Banana wrote in the same. My favorite part is when Cloud's mom said the ideal girl for Cloud is when is someone who will call him out when he's being a silly goose. Right. Marshall says, is there anyone less of a silly goose than Cloud? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a fair point. Yeah. Well, maybe that's a fair point that it, Claudia knows more about Cloud than we do. You know, like maybe she's True. seen him be a silly goose as he's growing up, even though now he's like... Well, he's 16. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. It also yeah. sounds like one of those things that a parent would call their taciturn child to taunt them <laughs> about sure, being sure, sure, so sure. silent yes. and not that's silly. That's right. Yeah. yeah, I guess that's it. Um, Ryan McGinnis says, Cloud's mom saying she wanted Cloud to find a mature woman who can keep him from being a silly goose is hot. I will <laughs> die on this hill. I agree. Uh, look, Thirst Council has consumed min-max content. This is all we talk about these days. Also, Cloud's got a flat ass for someone who squats as much as he does. Okay. No more horniness in the comments about Rebirth. This is where we draw the line, no matter what happens. Keep going. Uh, no, don't. <laughs> um, Chris uh, Finesse. That's a great point. They say, I was really struck by the scene where Cloud visits his mom. He acts so much more like his future self in this scene. Disinterested and aloof. Sure. That is true. He yeah, is that like, is true. Oh, oh, big boy Sephiroth, what are we going to kill today? Yeah. Oh, big boy Sephiroth. And then he goes yeah. in the house. Oh. It's mom. <laughs> <laughs> He's basically, yeah, just a Paul Rudd from Another American Summer, like cleaning up. Oh, oh. Yeah. Uh, but Chris says, um, after remake, it's much easier to see the vulnerability that he's hiding behind that facade. Her, yeah. her doting also makes me think that he might have developed that personality in response to Claudia's personality. Hmm. Retreating into himself when he feels so much pressure from others. Also, her name is Claudia, which is hilarious. <laughs> I don't think Cloud being moody is a result of his mom doing a bad job or being too doting. She seems like the perfect mother. Yeah. Other than the whole being on fire part. Yeah. <laughs> other than that, oh. like, primo mom. Oh, when, when she's so fantastic, <laughs> that's how you know that she is burning to a crisp. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll live forever. Claudia and Cloud to the end of time. Uh, 
All right, so back to Cloud in the old truckaroo. In the old truckaroo, yeah. Um, yeah, Garrett Hullfish says, Cloud in the backseat of the van gives me strong youngest brother on a family road trip vibe. <laughs> He's yeah, so excited bit, yeah. for the mission that he can't that sit sense. down. He then proceeds <laughs> to do the weirdest quest. By the way, what did you think of your dad on Facebook call, calling you the worst son he had? <laughs> I thought it was funny. I laughed. How, how did he phrase that? He said, I hang just, out with Ronnie's brother. My number brother. one son. Yeah, no, I mean, it was my brother. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, that's some bullshit. <laughs> and then he just replied back. Uh... He just wrote birth order. It's <laughs> because he's my older brother. It's, yeah, and then you got an email that said someone has blocked you on Facebook. Your <laughs> yeah, father's it was my name. dad. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so uh, I know this is a flashback, says Garrett, uh, and he did the squats in the remake as well. Yeah. But I hope in the present time he's finally learned how to do a proper squat. <laughs> how dare you attack Cloud? Um, yeah, it is so funny to see just Cloud's personality in clouds past here like right. with this level of fidelity where it's coming through so much more than it was in the original game where like he just looks so much more curious yes and like know? that scene too where he's we're jumping ahead a little bit but not too much but when he's lying in bed um and then he's like ancients saffron the book he's like heck i'm just gonna go ask him. i know yeah and, yeah, and yeah. Then he walks into the library and he's like what you reading there, Seth? Brother? Yeah. It really just feels like a little baby. Yeah. It's so funny. He does, and the way that he's trying to critically think and make these connections is so—it's so laughable. Yeah, it was like ancients, <laughs> Genova. He was and so been, confused about a very straightforward yeah, situation. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And also, is reading like tomes and tomes of books on this, and he's sitting there and saying the same three words: ancients, <laughs> Genova. If I put him in the right order. <laughs> Claudia! I'm just going to grab my buster sword. <laughs> uh, let's see. David T. writes in and says, I just wanted to comment on how great Cloud's voice actor was in this first chapter, especially if you know the original Final Fantasy VII story. Um, yeah. It is true. It is, it is fun to see uh, this much personality in, in young Cloud here, for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Um, we also have Nico. Nico wrote in. Oh, Nico! Don't be Nico. Wow! <laughs> it's the sequel to my favorite series of podcasts ever. Oh, Nico, hey. come on. There's something so fascinating about how normal Sephiroth is yeah, in the early right. parts of this mm -hmm. flashback. I loved his first line telling Cloud, Cloud to rein it in. Rain it in. <laughs> As the rookie does his <laughs> patented squat routine in the truck, his entire laid back demeanor until the reactor is so compelling and yeah. really made a new player like me wonder just what happened to turn him into that homicidal Cheshire cat we saw in the first game. Yeah. Well, you, hopefully you kind of get it. Yeah. Nice detail is that uh, wherever Sephiroth goes in Nibelheim, he's followed by an adoring crowd. That, and, oh, like, that's so cool. Two dozen people just like screaming for him like he's the Beatles. Yeah. That, yeah. that is genuinely i think my favorite part is like just when they're expanding on the lore in little bits and pieces in this town alone and like them all chanting his name like mm -hmm. crowding around having it, it, it drives home so much more clearly that sephiroth is a celebrity right he's a celebrity and also like he still has like he's got some some grace about him too because even when he's just like look we have a mission and that guy is is like hey can we get a picture for posterity posterity's sake and he's just like uh not today you know, it, it wasn't like he was cruel or anything like that. Yeah. And then he just like looked, you know, he's like, can you, can you talk to him? And they like go up and just be like, come on, please. And he's like, fine, I'll, I'll, I'll do it. Right. But I just like, how I, much could a picture hurt? He yeah, says yeah, it. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, yeah, it's just his overall tone is so fascinating. And like the fact that he's driven home so much more clearly as the big war hero, right? And like, yeah, even, yeah. See, the vaunted war hero, as Red 13 calls him in the previously on video. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. The oh, vaunted. Perfect. Yeah. The, the, Very I, vaunted. I had to. Uh, Go to Google, Google for that one. Oh, yeah. Vaunted. Red's vocabulary is, he's got a lot to work with. I yeah. Um, but it's like, he's seeing Tifa like geek out about Sephiroth. Like, oh, geez. When he's like, lead on. You know, like yeah. she's so yeah. excited to be interacting with this guy. And there's a lot of Tifa thoughts I have. But it, anyways, like seeing this much of a celebrity cult around Sephiroth, like it made this section hit so much harder because it's like, he is a war hero. It's like, if after the Civil War, Ulysses S. Grant just snapped and just like burned down Philadelphia. <laughs> right. And everyone's like, what the heck? You know, it's like that level. It's like, geez, like, of course people know him and talk about him around the world for like, uh, Sephiroth? Even though there's a bunch of misinformation yeah. out there from Shinra, naturally. You know? You've heard about the Great Chicago Fire, right? <laughs> Grant! <laughs> Ulysses S! <laughs> the development of Sephiroth as a character yes. um, is probably 
one of my favorite parts in, in just this this whole chapter. It's huge. Yep. Um, Specifically, like, they... This was the part that I was really curious about going back to the original. Yeah. Is just seeing, like, God, did they... Like, what was give, the tone? Did they give hints of him being a hero? Because in this one, he is... He's like a cool, they did, almost good guy. They? It's it was very, pretty, very little, very yeah. minimal. But he, I mean, they the also guy, like don't give him a lot of personality. Like, like he seems like somebody that's a little bit like standoffish, not necessarily like cruel or kind. And what I really appreciate about this, this like, this new kind of different take is just like how much of a leader he is, right. like for Cloud, and just like he, it, it's almost like he has the. He has like the personality of somebody that can like handle the fame. He's, like, he's young, figured it out. Yes, famous young boss. You know, he's yeah, like, yeah. it's time for your performance review, buddy. <laughs> right, like, that yeah, type yeah. Of just oh, fun just cheekiness. Yeah. Oh. yeah. Um, I mean, in the original, they, they still want him to pose for the picture, but when they leave town, they skip straight from town to the bridge, basically. Yeah, right. Um, so all his little quips about the beautiful Nibelheim scenery for a reactor yeah. and. Yeah. Bus- business trips. That um, is the part that the business like, trips. Yeah, Tifa is so jealous. I'm going on business trips, and it's like, uh, oh, you're not really. So that's kind of boring. Yeah, yeah. it's like <laughs> it, it kind of sucks to work for Shinra. It's kind of a boring corporation overall. But yeah. like that, honestly, it, in peacetime, I suppose. Like that's where they. That's where they are now. Right. That's yeah. the part that just floored me. Is like this remake trilogy. It's going to the detail of Sephiroth complaining about business trips with Tifa. Like, what, yes, what right. do you want? That's what, it. What do we that's think that cool. Sephiroth does on a day to day basis as in this time? time in his mm. life is he going out to beat up monsters that are so. presumably overrunning maka reactors and stuff are like you that counting him combing his hair because that's like <laughs> six hours a day yeah that's a, that's a big routine i'm gonna guess it's the costanza approaching he sits behind his desk looking angry so he, people, think he, <laughs> people think he's busy all the time yep. don't make me go stab a dragon don't make me go stab a dragon <laughs> <laughs> but no, it, it made me wonder and not knowing uh or either not remembering or not knowing what's coming up um i'm like did he get sent on this specific mission to make this series of events happen? No. Okay. Um, I think it's just they they set it up, right? That's that, an like, interesting way to look at that, though. Yeah, that Nibelheim like, is, yeah. is under he, such a threat that the idea was like Shinra needs to send the best soldiers okay. to like calm <laughs> these people down because they're panicking. And there's soldiers with guns in the front I mean, yard. Sure, here. and and Shinra knows... Like, hey, this is like the one place that, uh, so every other uh, reactor is under the control of urban development, except yeah. this one. This one is R&D, and right. it's particularly So if something Hojo, going, is going wrong, it's something it's terrible weird, that Hojo did, right? It's a weird yeah. call to then be like, bring Sephiroth. Like, you but know they what also I mean? They, they want it more protected than the average situation. So it's a situation of like, Sephiroth right. is sensitive to this area but we just want this stuff to be safe so we're going to send him we're not going to send it does you know, seem like a just cloud uh, like by a, himself. A, a gross oversight in in hindsight like oh that was yeah. probably a bad idea to uh bring him but on the sephiroth front we did a um a max spoilers for the sephiroth origin story that they tell in ever crisis which is that mobile game I, okay and, sure and that genuinely it, it did add a nice perspective to this of mm. like i didn't know they're going to make sephiroth so likable in this opening section and like Ever Crisis, you get to see him going on his first mission with a, right. a team uh, from Soldier. Yep. Uh, and so that's really fun because he's basically raised in a lab, you know? Mm-hmm. And so him going on that mission, Shinra had like sent out a bunch of propaganda. They're like, oh, he's the greatest warrior ever. He's the best ever. And it's like, it turns out this was his first mission actually in the crowd or in the in the, in the the wild. Right, yep. Oh. Um, that Shinra was just yep. lying about all that stuff. And he's just like really socially awkward like literally, mm-hmm. I think he like he apologizes to his team for like whistling, mm-hmm. and he's just like he's constantly tripping over yes. his words. He's just like weird and self conscious. So it's really fun. Well, he doesn't know how to be a leader, from what I, I recall. Right. Like he he's right. got no like like he's got no like personal connection to the people that he was directing. And I think one of the things that he was like kind of called out for in the beginning was just like, look, you don't really know us, so don't whistle at us. And he's like, and he was receptive to it. He's like, oh okay, all right, I, I won't do that. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, and now it's kind of interesting because like look at how well he does like guiding cloud so how much he's grown like in the past I don't know how many years that would have been yeah yeah do we know how old he is in this I assume 47 
<laughs> I, I, I assume, by the way, Final Fantasy ages work, he's like 26. He's probably, probably around yeah. there, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. you can tell he's right having way. a little bit of fun. Like, yeah. Yeah. it seems like a more fun mission than normal for him. And I think it's such a smart yeah. idea. Instead of having be evil going in or flat going totally. in, to have him be that extra heroic edge. Like, you know, yep. even in this... When they get to the bridge and it collapses, like the fact that he's like, all right, well, I'm dropping first and I'm going to be in the river. I'm going to catch people as they go yep. by me. Like yep. that is not in the original at all. No, like, it's not. He doesn't. He evaluated also, the situation like he saw like the, they were those were given out and he's yeah. just like, OK. But he even makes a point in the original where they're like, what about the second uh, like helper dude, <laughs> soldier man? Yeah. that was rushing on the river. and He's like, nothing we can do. We got to keep going. Is what he's he says in, in the face original. hands now. Yeah, and in this yeah. one, it's like he gets back from searching for him. Right. right. Before yep. he's like, yeah, he's in fate hands. What, do, what are you going to do? Yep. Um. Felix Diaz writes in, they say, is Sephiroth the best example ever of the villain being cooler than the hero? No. I feel like most villains are cooler than heroes. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah. like, I, I, yeah. I was D- thinking Darth back. Darth Vader? Or are we talking games only? I think everything. Right. I think we can. Because I was yeah. thinking Darth back, Vader. like, if you pulled me Darth aside Vader. at age eight, ten, let's say, a ripe twelve, and just said, <laughs> hey, who's cooler, Joker or Batman? Like Joker. Yeah, I don't. I don't think I would, I would love 1989 Batman. I don't think I would have thought that Batman was cooler than the Joker. Yeah, yeah. Joker was just more entertaining, right? right? And that's yeah, what yeah, you yeah, want. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Which, I mean, Cloud. He's got his classic quips, like leave he me does. alone, he's got mom. A lot. <laughs> <laughs> and whatever. whatever. Perfectly kind mom. <laughs> <laughs> don't make me dinner. <laughs> so when you were talking about um, piano earlier and yeah. how Cloud must have. Uh, made a very elaborate description of how good he was at right. piano to yeah. his friends in the future. I assume he was also doing that when he runs into all the townspeople and they're all like, hey, Cloud, you look like you're doing totally awesome. <laughs> that <laughs> is my favorite stuff as well. Everything yeah. in chapter one is my favorite. Um, but I love that too because it's, it's also different from in the original, where in the original, most people are like, who are you again? And it's like, oh, well, they call him like a dumb head or something like that. They, <laughs> yeah. yeah. They, like, it's, they recognize him a little uh, bit. They call him Big Head or something? It, yeah. Jeez. Um, I forget what it was. It's harsh. brutal. It's harsh stuff. <laughs> it was, yeah. But then it's funny, in this one, like everyone's worshiping Sephiroth, but then also like, hey, Big Shot Cloud! <laughs> yeah, 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 He's yeah. the coolest! Yeah, it's like, okay. Back in town. Well, yeah, convenient, back. <laughs> convenient story to tell your friends. Right? <laughs> yeah. Um, and then I love that when he meets Zangan, then when Zangan's talking about Tifa, and it's like, what is it? You can like, he asks like, will Tifa go far? Or there's some comment about that. Oh, uh, right. Where yeah. he says like, Tifa's going to go really far. And Cloud's yeah. like, yeah, yeah right. right. And then Tifa yeah. jumps in. She's like, yeah. excuse me? <laughs> I was like, well, I didn't, I didn't know. Well, Zangan is flexing and <laughs> punching said, in the yeah, air. Yeah, exactly. And he could have. <laughs> Tifa. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You don't see a Rams lot of martial artists with capes. <laughs> and I like that look. <laughs> it is very good. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we got some Zangan love, believe it or not. Uh, people he are, was, he was great. He was great. horny for Zangan. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, it I was, love that the mayor has a little a little star badge, too. Like, he's the junior buckaroo. Of- <laughs> 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 I'm the junior buckaroo. <laughs> I'm a sucker for, like, just new political backstory and yeah. new political machinations in 7 with the remake stuff here. And the part that I love about the mayor, who's up there, like, the best part of the chapter one rebirth is the mayor in Nibelheim. No, <laughs> but it's him talking Finally. about like how much he's just trying to glad hand oh, with totally, Sephiroth. Yeah. And when yes. like when Sephiroth comes back and like locks himself away and he was Tifa's like, off. yeah, he was yeah. pissed because he thought he was going to get to have dinner with his war hero yeah. and yes. get to brag about it. The most it. powerful person on the planet is having an emotional <laughs> yeah. crisis. And like the mayor is like, but he didn't have dinner with me. <laughs> it sucks. I'll never get reelected from these 14 people. <laughs> Uh, Michael M says <laughs> he wasn't even elected. <laughs> my badge to Zangan now. <laughs> he was just the first person to buy a badge buy in town. Badge. This is a junior Buckaroo on it. Uh, I guess he's it's our leader. Me. Junior Buckaroo. I mean, Mayor. There's <laughs> monsters invading the town. What do we do? <laughs> hey, what is with the cowboy motif? Tifa's uh, dad as yeah. well. It's so yeah, weird. yeah, you're right. And it's For, only like a few people, yeah. like the mayor. <laughs> and they live in the mountains. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> What's yeah. going on? There? Like, <laughs> Nibelheim is more like a Norse mythology type thing, right? There's no and then, horses or chocobos around no, there. Very a ranch in sight. Uh, well, let's give Tifa's dad or do. His name is Brian. The best part about chapter one is Rebirth's me. It's Brian. His name is Brian? Yeah, they, they have it in the summer. They call him Brian real quick, where he's like, please don't let my daughter go on this quest. Like, Brian, Brian. calm down. Come on. Chocobo, be like, don't freak out like normal Brian. Chocobo be like if Brian. Cloud's mom's name was Angela or something. It's just, it's bad. Uh, yeah, I, I think that... Brian, Brian. Ang- <laughs> 
I love you, Brian. <laughs> Why are we saying everybody's name in this game over and over again, but we're just not acknowledging that his name is Brian? Is this, why are you ashamed of your father's name, Tifa? Um, but uh, Tanner wrote in saying, ever since she did it on the podcast, Janet's Yeehaw Tifa has been stuck in my head. Yeah. What do you think of seeing Yeehaw Tifa in the remake? <laughs> and thoughts about her character here in general? I love I, Yeehaw Tifa. Yeah. <laughs> I felt like they did a good job of just like making her a little bit more like boisterous and, and just kind of like... You know, a little bit more like sporadic and, and kind of impulsive and I don't know, just like a good representation of Tifa five years ago, I would imagine. But so. I think it, it's extra fun because all of the stuff you see in Calm with Tifa, where mm-hmm. she's just like, okay. Like, when, literally oh, they kick off this yes. entire section where uh, Barrett says, tell me about your buddy Sephiroth. And Cloud goes, yeah, no problem. If Tifa doesn't mind. And Tifa's like, oh, uh, that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> so I just love that split. And then you see her as right. like rootness cowgirl yeah. in town. Yeah. Just, like, just yes. don't mention my awkward cowgirl face. <laughs> <laughs> we all went through it. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of all going through it, I'm sure there are plenty of comments about this, but did you guys open the cabinet? Oh, yeah. oh, oh yes, yeah. of okay. course. Because yeah. when Which, I got guilted, I was like, oh, I wasn't doing anything. See, here's the thing. I, I went back. Oh, you got to double down. Yeah, yeah. yeah double down. See, like, <laughs> there's no right answer to that. The, the right answer is to say, not even, not even click gotcha. on it. Because right. if you say yes... You're an asshole. If you say no, you're almost even more of an asshole. Like, then why would you even say it? Yeah, Barrett's you know? like, I can't believe what's wrong. With you. <laughs> yeah, what? Exactly. I, just, I didn't yeah. even open. I was trying it's, to make a joke. It's yeah. so innocent. Okay, too. a what was in there? Oh, it was orthopedic underwear. Well, in the original, it's orthopedic underwear, yeah. which Joshua Duperoy wrote in, horrified that it wasn't in the original game, or that it wasn't in the rebirth. They didn't call it orthopedic underwear. But Grant and I did a little bit of research, and it turns yeah. out that's not a thing. It doesn't. <laughs> it only exists in the world. <laughs> yeah, of yeah. Yeah. Gra- just granny panties. Yeah, granny panties is, is the idea. Oh, right? I see. Tim okay. Rogers oh, has said that that okay. makes more sense. Yeah. Um, um, but you- I think it's just I'm trying to remember what it is specifically. Because I didn't open it on my most recent playthrough. Okay. Like, I want to see was, this. And so, wasn't there nothing? I mean, like, um, it was just... It's didn't he, it was, like, from the perspective of him, and he just, like, goes like this, and, like... I think it's underwear. Like, they oh. say something okay. about... Hang on, you're making it seem like you're... I have no idea. Room. Oh. oh, really? So you didn't open it? No, I didn't open it. It's, wow. it's something that's not orthopedic underwear, but it could be... It's in the arena of, like... Okay. Huh. Hot panties. I, no, I, yeah, gotcha. I don't some, remember what it was. I just... The only note that I have is that... Um, Tifa and Aerith both say, Cloud, you asshole. They say yeah, it in they say unison. It in, yeah. unison the I best. love that. Yeah, the I other thing that. is that they didn't have one thing to say when I took that ether out of her parents' bedroom. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there is. Oh, where is it? Um, oh, we'll find it. Yes, don't you get a stash, of, a stash of money of hers, too? And it's like one Tifa stash of one gill. Oh, I didn't I find so. that. Uh, okay. In the original game. Oh, oh okay. Yeah. Uh, mm. We have um, Justin Dale wrote in saying one thing I noticed while in photo mode in Tifa's room is she has a little Moogle stuffed animal huh, on fun. her bed and the Moogle's wearing bandages around its head, which is fun. Um, huh. Do you think um, think she's going to like Kate Tiff more because she like grew up with a little Moogle on her bed? No one likes him. We all remember that classic dynamic between <laughs> Kate Sith and Tifa in the original game. A lot of chemistry there. Uh, Vibrant. Chemistry. Cut it with a knife. <laughs> uh, the other thing... Justin says, the other thing that I noticed was all the bottles laying around Tifa's house. I don't remember anything about her parents having any issues with the sauce, but I found it peculiar. No, 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 no. There was actually something about that. Like the reason why she ran away in the first place, wasn't it because like her her parents were fighting and that's why she like ran up uh, Mount Mount Nebel. Mm. So Brian is a bit of a drunkard. I think so. That's, that's, not, that's not slander, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> he dresses Brian. like a champ. Like, what, like, what, if it's, like, what if it's Mrs. Fu? You never know. <laughs> Mrs. Fu. <laughs> oh, Mrs. Lockhart, yeah. excuse me. I do like Tifa, yeah, and her portrayal in this section here, because it's like, you know, maybe it's just her wearing the cowgirl outfit. No, 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 no. no. What it was... <laughs> Every no. time Ronnie went to interrupt, we interrupt a great point. He knocks three times and then comes barging in. It like wasn't Kramer. a great point. Um, anyways, no, it was because <laughs> her, it, it was uh, because her mom died. That was why. Right, right, right. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, never mind. Um, Go on with your great point. So, <laughs> <laughs> but it drove home even further. Like Tifa's a country bumpkin. Yep. Nibelheim is a small town. And she's dressing up like a cowgirl. She has a post on her wall, like. Ride bucking bronco choco bro, you know, yeah. like she's a choco rodeo or whatever. Right, so it makes me like more sympathetic for her. The fact that like her default mode in the world is 
running up and down a mountain and punching the hell out of goons. Working with yeah. Zanga and training, just trying to get out of bum F USA. Right. Um, That's but, a good point. But yeah. then it's like, you just see her and it's like, oh, she's in Midgar. She's serving drinks. But like, she's that she, she's out of her comfort zone in Midgar serving drinks. You know what I mean? And I always like that idea. I'd be kind of sympathetic it, for her. Do we ever know why, like, like the journey for Tifa? Between someone needs to play more Ever Crisis, the mobile game. If you deposit <laughs> a certain amount of money, you, they do Is have that, that story. They have Tifa's like think, journey to from I mean, sure. to mid, their home, sure. hometown gets torched well. to a crisp and her. <laughs> yeah. Okay, that's that's a good point. Yeah. <laughs> Family's murdered. Yeah. <laughs> something something. But rent's pretty low. <laughs> Not bad. Um, who we have? Uh, Ricky Maru. Writes in, but Ricky, I'm not interested in that Ricky. one yet. Demosphere, more interested in. They say, small thing, but were people slightly disappointed that the dragon boss from the beginning of the Nibelheim flashback yes. was replaced by two small Disgorgons? Yeah. I feel like having the big dragon boy could have been a more grand way to start the game and would have also made the Sephiroth fight, made Sephiroth seem even stronger. I haven't yeah. seen anyone else bothered by this change. Perhaps fans are immediately more accepting of the changes as a whole, since we all managed to kill the Arbiters of Fate at the end of Remake. Uh, <laughs> that's right. That's Maybe. the main difference. Yes. Since you killed Fate at the end of Remake, is now it's two freaks instead of a big dragon. I don't know. It's still a big dragon, though. Yeah. You know? I, mean, I assume they don't want to um, lessen the impact of the Materia Guardian boss. And so... That's true. It could be that, and also yeah. like it Build does give you an chapter. opportunity to just kind of see like where Cloud is in comparison, because it's just like, okay, I killed this one, like one slash, and like, okay, this one's all yours, and he just trips on the mud, <laughs> <laughs> and then Zebrath has to dispatch him. Yeah. And, the, and the flash when he slices the gurgurgurgurgurgurgurgurgurgurgurgurgurgurgurgurgurgurgurgurgurgurgurgurgurgurgurgurgurgurgurgurgurgurgurgurgurgurgurgurgurgurgurgurgurgurgurgurgurgur
counted around 137 residents in Nibelheim for for rebirth. Hmm. Up from less than 10 in the original people. <laughs> wow. Um, Look at how far we've come. Yeah. Also, the idea of famous soldiers showing up reminded me of how excited people would get in the towns I grew up when anything noteworthy happened. What a fantastic start to get us back into the world for rebirth. Uh, absolutely. Uh, Jeremy B. says, We had a taste of this in Crisis Core, but seeing Nibelheim fully realized in a modernized, explorable environment with the fantastic new music renditions and seeing each yeah. part of the town in the home sweet home quest is jaw-dropping for me. The opening bombing mission and remake evoked a similar feeling, but as this was my personal favorite section of the original game and what got me hooked on the story as a kid, it yeah. just hit so much more. P.S. Shout out to Grant's Coheed posters in the announcement video. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> And Here's a question. Do you uh, have to do all of the little vignettes before you go to bed on the first night, or can you miss some of them? You don't you have can. to. Yeah. You can jump wherever you want to okay. go. Um, why? Because you were just eating sandwiches for days? Yeah. <laughs> just like, make sure she's going to say something new. <laughs> Please. <laughs> Uh, yeah, Ryan writes in and says, Did anyone else get a pork sandwich from the lady in town? And notice how Cloud ate the entire thing in three bites while making <laughs> weird mouth sounds? Based on the way he ate, I think Cloud may be some sort of inhuman monster. Yeah. Spoilers. He can detach his jaw to eat a sandwich. <laughs> Infinite Soup says, okay, let's get to the stuff that really matters here, folks. Mm-hmm. How many sandwiches did you eat in Nibelheim? <laughs> I talked to that lady and had Cloud chow down on some sandwiches until a prompt on screen told me I'd be too full for dinner. <laughs> Will this have ramifications in the story? I didn't, did st- that I didn't pro- notice it. Yeah. I, I mean, I think I did three or four probably that's if you have just one sandwich though it puts cloud in a bad mood and that's why he's mean to his mom oh. yeah because if you have a full tummy no one's nice to their mom i already <laughs> ate don't try to feed me mom sick of you in the kitchen <laughs> <laughs> by a similar token uh how long do you guys stay on the title screen of a game just in case something happens that you should see before you push start oh what? Mm-hmm. wait like the main menu yeah like the main the main title screen so that's like going back to the like old PS1 RPGs are like, I want to see the sizzle yeah, reel. Is there yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Or like, yeah, uh, Wild Arms is what did it to me because you got to wait like sure. three, four minutes on that main screen and then you get like a prologue in Ooh. that game. And I was like, I didn't see it till like halfway through oh. the game. So Weird. Think yeah. about how much time that you've spent looking at a screen just <laughs> because know. of Wild Arms that happened like, you know, <laughs> yep. how many years ago? I, I, I would say I don't do it for seven. Okay. Just because it's like the original didn't you know. do it, so... Yeah, you get the idea. Yeah. Um, Infinite Soup. Oh, they say, uh, yeah, well, the eating too many sandwiches have ramifications on the story. Also, was Sephiroth counting how many sandwiches I ate and decided then and there to burn the village down? <laughs> <laughs> this is oh. unsustainable, Cloud. <laughs> oh, Cloud. Another pork sandwich. You are the monster, Cloud. <laughs> I knew I hated this town for a reason. The pork, Cloud. Not even good. Good night, Cloud. <laughs> It's four o'clock. <laughs> Good night, Cloud. Yeah. It was quite bright out when they went to yeah. bed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Better, better get some rest. I wear shades over my eyes, Cloud. <laughs> there's only three. Just, there's only three beds in the room, dude. Where, where did he sleep? <laughs> also, Sephiroth just needs twenty hours of sleep. Every day. Yeah. Did the <laughs> woman running the inn say there. pick whatever room you want, and then there's only one room? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Well, well, that's one, a larger one room point. And three beds. <laughs> yes. Who doubled up? Hayden Berthelot is upset, saying, maybe I miss where all the other houses are in the town, but it's odd to see only, like, ten buildings with a lot of people standing around. <laughs> Feels like the limitations sure. of the original game had you filling in details of where everyone lived in your imagination, but blown it to a modern game, the lack of houses stood out to me. Mm. There, must, yeah. there must be a suburb out there somewhere. It's it's kind of a baby game. I wish we could talk about a critic now that I think about it. A suburb. They all sleep in the, <laughs> yes, in the reactor. Right, yeah. Tubelheim. <laughs> How many people can you fit in the basement of the Shinra Mansion? Oh, dozens. <laughs> we you just know. got like Willy Wonka style beds. They all sleep yeah, tip to toe in there. What do you mean there's a basement? <laughs> Uh, Nobody in town really knew there was a basement until <laughs> we found a bunch of bunk beds down there. <laughs> bunch of snoring people with stupid Scrooge McDuck nightcaps on. Uh, Moonsbro writes in, Did anyone else notice the little girl in Nibelheim singing the stamp song from Remake? I never mm-hmm. thought I'd be excited to hear a random song from Shinra Break... Break room, but here we are. And then Moon's Bro says, Bow wow wow, bow wow wow. <laughs> it's a lovely little dog. Uh, if it was, oh my god, I forgot about that. It's so good. It's if it such was hip hop chocobo, I would have, I mean, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely <laughs> noticed. <laughs> no, I didn't notice If it was hip hop chocobo, I would have slowly turned around and tried to walk <laughs> back out of Nibelheim. But oh, I'm so in the bag for Stamps theme. I was listening to it again on YouTube today. Just. 
endlessly. For, <laughs> it's for, the best thing about Chapter One and Rebirth. First thing I do on my way home, I'm pulling up Hip Hop Chocobo. Oh. Right. I can have the windows down too. It's mm-hmm. nice enough here right now. Just at a long stoplight. They're honking behind you. <laughs> it's green! <laughs> We're not going to enjoy your music. It's green! Go! Freaking go! Hold on. It's about to drop. <laughs> uh, Jiren writes in, says, One small detail I appreciate in this section was seeing heavily armed citizens near the entry points for the town. It yeah. makes it clear that the world of Final Fantasy VII is extremely dangerous yep. and that monster attacks are a constant threat to the human populace. Similar guards were found frequently in the slums areas of Remake as well. I do love that. Like, yeah. I love how silly uh, the world of Final Fantasy VII can be, but it is a good reminder that like, these people are scared oh, <laughs> endlessly. Totally, yeah. And like, Sephiroth yeah. comes in and like, thank God my child won't be carried away <laughs> at night anymore by monsters. Yeah. These freaking monsters <laughs> coming in, man. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I love the... It's all militia, right? I mean, like, even though, like, I guess there's no government, right? I mean, like... He oh, has like, the badge, dude. Got, well, yeah. The, <laughs> there's yeah, municipal yeah, government Buckaroo, and then like, just, like, a big corpocracy, right, of Shinra? Yeah, I mean, like, but yeah, they're not seems, actually seems governing like it. it at that point. Like, because there's no Shinra so- soldiers that are just like, hey, welcome. Like, it was militia that welcomed them in yeah. and was pumped about that. But, like, other than that, Shinra is providing them... Electricity, sweet sweet power, sweet sweet power, but is doing nothing else for that town. It's kind of like it's just a territory of the U.S., I guess. Of like, look, we'll send some soldiers there if we need to, but we're not. There's no (laughs) government actively breeding the monsters in the (laughs) reactor. Sorry, (laughs) our bad guys. (laughs) Well, that's on us. Okay, yeah, I guess that's on us. (laughs) Yeah, the man's keeping you down. (laughs) Whatever. Getting really defensive. (laughs) Uh. Chase says, no, I do love just, yeah, talking to all the people in the town, but uh, like the kid who's like, do some magic. Do some. He feels like, do a backflip. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. like, do a kickflip. <laughs> but it's like, yeah, people came to your town. It's like, you can do what with your hands? You can shoot magic out of it? Of course. Uh, Chase Klein writes in, though, and they say, did anyone else notice the kids playing what seemed like a turn-based pretend battle on the way to the water tower town square? Oh, that's fun. No, yeah. I didn't know. They, were, they were lined up that way, and it looks kind of like three kids on, on one monster. Also, rad Coheed posters grant yes. Coheed for ha. life. They yeah, say. keep them coming. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So the deepest dive in Coheed and camera. That's coming up next year. Um, stay tuned, everybody. I remember, okay. I remember a Fire Inside Out podcast, and then a certain <laughs> podcast host who will just <laughs> refuse to do a Coheed deep dive with me. I don't understand. Look, we haven't done Dream Car yet on our <laughs> AFI podcast. We can't get to Coheed before we get to the Dream Car album. Um, put a poll up there if the people want it. I mean, I'm, <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm ready. Okay, Grant, you think Cody's going to be okay. against Dream Car? Yeah. Okay, <laughs> all right, buddy. Keep dreaming. Um, Aaron T., otherwise known as Aaron J. Bear, they wrote in and said, um, I'm a camera nerd. Look, this is the deepest dive. If you thought that we're not playing it's for bad. keeps <laughs> here, you're, you're sorely mistaken. So um, Aaron T., writes in and gives the deepest dive its name saying I'm a camera nerd and there's an NPC in town with a camera so naturally I use the photo mode to get a closer look at it in the game <laughs> the body is nondescript but the top of the viewfinder is design Nikon starting started using in the 2000s on their DSLR cameras Ooh. he's also using a vintage Nikon 50 millimeter uh, I should know how to say this. F stop 1.4. I'm a camera guy. F mount lens. You can actually see the focus and aperture markings along with a silver rabbit ear tab sticking out of it. Oh, fun. That tab is how we know it's a Nikon lens and likely from 1959 through 1977. Now, it should be noted, this is not the same camera that he has during the cutscene before climbing the mountain. That one looks like a Zeiss Iconta 522 over 24. They made two different cameras for this guy? <laughs> <laughs> different yeah. lenses for different situations. Yeah. You know, I, I want it. to be sure I to capture... It. This does um, wonders for my immersion. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this, that's the type of deepest do- dive comment that I love. Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah, what absolutely. you're here for. Else, no one else in the world did that. Yep. Yeah. And that's what we love. Look, if you're the 14th person writing and saying the piano was cool, God bless you. We love you. Thanks for supporting Min Max on Patreon. But we're looking for... The more specific your comment is, the higher odds we're going to read it. And by the way, I should point out, if you're watching this or listening to this, maybe if you're watching it and you're saying, why are they talking about this? These idiots don't know anything. That's we're, true. We're here for you. Uh, we'll read your comment in the next, week, uh, next week's episode. So you can write in on Patreon if you want us to read your comment and you can fix things that we're missing, getting wrong. Oh, yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. You can say that Dreamcar is better than Coheed, whatever you want. Or the opposite. I mean, please, my, <laughs> my notes are dumb. I, I need you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Steph Roth tall. <laughs> or short. <laughs> 
Cloud? Oh. Cloud? Short? <laughs> Michael M. writes in and says, It was so cool to see Zangang, Tifa's master, in Nibelheim after reading about him in the Traces of Two Past novel. Zangan is wow. a starring role. Seeing how he examined, <laughs> seeing how he examined Cloud's body, made me understand why Tifa was so creeped out by him originally. I don't remember him being mentioned oh, in the sure. original game, though. Oh, he's in there. He was, yeah, definitely it, in there. He is. He oh, yeah. is. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, you obviously don't get him to be the star of the show. Like that camera work, just flying all around his body and stuff, and him sizing yeah. Cloud up. It's like uh, he has one quick reference. Like, oh, I, I taught Tifa. I taught like 130 people around the world. He says. Yeah. In the, yeah. does he? He's at the reactor. Carrying is he the one who carries? I think so. I think, so. I think yeah. so. Yeah, yeah. 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 Right. Yep. You're right. Um, Sean Mills says I ran into a crowd of people you can work out with in Nibelheim who yeah. are doing a routine that they called Zanga size. <laughs> I'm guessing it. this is something that Zangan has taught the people. <laughs> This is called Zonga size. Uh, just so you guys know. Um, and they were all doing. That's all where their, the squats come from, actually. This is Zonga squats. All they were doing was raising their hands in the air. No wonder yep. they weren't in shape to fight back when Sephiroth decided to burn them down. <laughs> so yeah, it's just kind of some calisthenics. Uh, it's, it's he didn't even a, make it to Typo. Uh, yeah. It's just a snake oil salesman goes from town to town. <laughs> <such a beautiful, laughs> <like, laughs> Step two: fetal position. <laughs> Uh, it's not good they were all murdered. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> Some, uh, I've taught a hundred people. <laughs> Zong guys just going around and checking their pockets for their wallets if they're murdered. <laughs> when was the last time I was in calm? <laughs> Johnny M. writes in, said, did anyone else see Cloud mimic the stretching class pose if oh, yeah. you get too close to them and then spend a bunch of time trying to see if they do another pose to mimic? They never yeah. end up changing a pose. Yeah, it's just the one thing. Like, this game is blowing out every corner of the game that I thought it was going to be like, all right, here's the full Zonga size mini but game. They did, but they did acknowledge it. Like, doesn't Tifa ask at some point, like, just like, oh, you exercise for a while? And he goes, a little bit. Yeah. Something like that. <laughs> I tried it. What? <laughs> not, I need to get my cloud voice down better. It's, no, that was perfect. Was that it? Was, yeah, it was. It's higher pitched it. than you would think, which yeah. I appreciate because he's not like a big uh, hefty dude, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Scrawny little arms. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, let's see. Strong, uh, sinewy, but strong. Yeah, yeah. No one wrote in about this, but um, I saw somebody online talking about how in Tifa's room, next to her coveted piano, there's yeah. a poster of like dolphins and a guy going like, yeah! Love and it. It's the outline of Zell from oh, Age. Really? Shut up! Oh. A game that Ross will not acknowledge or sell it <laughs> yeah. anyway, but... Zell was like the coolest character Ross. He's like way better than Amaranth or whoever you liked in Nine. So that's where your love of hot dogs comes from. <laughs> oh, big time. He's so always calling people chicken wuss in real life. Oh, you know? oh yeah. <laughs> Good time. Love it. Love it. Piss ant. <laughs> yeah, Ron and I were so into Final Fantasy VIII that I think for two years of our lives, I called you a piss ant every time we hung up the phone. <laughs> Yeah, but we talked on the phone a lot for some what reason. Think, like, how much would you pay for one recording of us talking on the phone? Honestly, one hundred fifty dollars. Two hundred dollars, you'd say no. <laughs> I'd do two hundred. And, and it's probably the exact same conversations about just jokes about cloud sex life. <laughs> <laughs> and then us like just not saying on the anything on the phone as we we're playing Age of Empires together. <laughs> what, are you, uh, what are you doing? But did you see that uh, Age of Mythology retold stuff? No, it's coming out twenty twenty four. Shut Speaking up. of other remakes in 2024, that sound great. No fun. way. Okay. This is Final Fantasy nerds. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, in the zone. In the zone. Um, Hammer Parser writes in, Hey, the scene where he visits his mom disturbed me to my core. Wow. Why didn't Cloud hug his mom? I get it. He's kind of a distant person. And he's weird. But why on earth he didn't hug his mom after not seeing her for two gosh darn years? Is it yeah. me or is that whole section weird and uncomfortable? He's, he's 16. It's all right. But they say, with the glitchy, jumpy scenes and him paying half attention to his mom while she's talking to him and then suddenly ending without a goodbye was it intentional hug your mom dude yeah <laughs> um, that's gonna be like a I, I always feel like that's like a design limitation about just like characters just pushing up together <laughs> well I, here's here's <laughs> What are you saying? <laughs> I'm trying to say the can. I mean, like this, down like, down I mean, like this, like a couple of times where just like in in games like this where like people, two people are excited to see each other and they like run up to one another and they just like stop and they're just like, hey, you know, instead of like the what kind of games you playing, bro. I'm playing Final <laughs> Fantasy VII. <laughs> like some Baldur's Gate stuff. I will say, like, you know, <laughs> that scene is a little montagey, right? And it's like yes, she's yeah. saying things, and that you could interpret that as like. Cloud 
still being a little traumatized by it and not wanting to get into details in his retelling to his friends. Anthony B, you are, (laughs) Anthony B, you are channeling through Ross's mouth in this moment because on Patreon, Anthony B says, Cloud's retelling of the segment with his mom is so disjointed because he's uncomfortable describing the final memories he has of his mother. The voice acting is great when he approaches the door. Tifa's tone is supportive and sympathetic as the only one in the room who already knows how the story ends. Because yeah, there's that weird moment of like, uh, I guess I go That's in. That's a very good point. Yeah. yeah. Um, Quinn Riley writes in. But hang on. Here's also the thing. is like Knock think three about- times. <laughs> so, but he like, <laughs> there's so many things that he decides to tell that you don't need to tell. Such as going into Tifa's uh, closet, right? Right. Mm-hmm. He'll tell you that. But he won't tell you about his mom. His little it's porks, kind of an pork interesting sandwich that he eats too, and, and the forty-seven pork sandwiches <laughs> that he eats. But doesn't talk to his mom. I think that's kind of an interesting like like juxtaposition to kind of like look at there. Yeah, and I, I think I, I think there's something to that. Of it's not some grand strategy. I think it's just largely it's just a traumatic thing for him. So it's going to have that weird static intercutting that's going on here. Right. Yeah. But. Uh, oh, that's a good point. Quinn Riley writes in. They say, I loved the opportunity to see Cloud visiting his hometown. The only thing I wish we got to see more of was his interaction with his mom. The static interference that happens when she's talking to him makes me super interested in how their whole interaction is actually playing out um, in real time. The, um, so the static, I love that in the beginning, like the most bold use of it so far um, is the first time Barrett pauses and it like get, like static freezes on Sephiroth's face and it's like the full like green static look and it's yeah. like it's it is bold and it's aggressive it kind of makes it a little bit look like it's on a CRT yeah like you stopped a VHS playback a little bit but it's it's more yeah, li- yeah it's not like the tracking lines yeah. you know like that's just a weird level of static but it's it's aggressive but it's it's more fun than a record scratch I guess that they could do in that situation <laughs> it's kind of just like you're probably like you're wondering kind of watch, how I watching got a movie <laughs> yeah a uh, lot of love for the piano. Uh, Steven Puente is asking if hmm. anyone else tried to play the Jurassic Park theme on the piano. Yeah, I did it. I nailed it. And then I went right to the Lost World theme. <laughs> nailed that one. The Jurassic World I had, theme. I had a little trouble on the Lost World. Yeah, he would. Um, I did the main theme for Raiders. Me too. I did for Color Purple. I Me did too. the credits song. Um, Me. AI. <laughs> <laughs> what? Me too. Yeah, I did that one too. AI. Um, I tried. I only played. I, I I played the original like Tifa's theme on there. Like bum well, bum bum bum. So bum. that's the weird fun part. Yeah. Right. Is mm-hmm. in the demo they have the sheet music. Okay. Grant, Grant yes. was stumped about this, and it's such so. A, I was super stumped about that. It's too. interesting. In the actual game, it's not no there. sheet music. Really? Yeah. What was the sheet music in the demo? In the demo, it's just you pull it up oh. and it's Tifa's theme. Yeah. Oh, so you got a, you had an opportunity to just like jam out. Yeah, and it'll t- and it's like a little mini game that'll show you yeah, exactly how to yeah. play it. And I yeah. assume that's going to be for like other piano- pianos you see later in the game. Yep, you'll be able to build that up. But it's weird that in the actual final game that we're playing, not the demo, it's not that it's not there. there. Yep, I know. Oh, yes. Maybe they the- patch it in. It's a weird detail. It's probably it very because detail. if that is going to be later in the game, this is a different time period. So you why got, would Cloud yes. have that uh, sheet music still in his inventory in the modern? Okay. Era. Yeah. Right. Sure. Because you yes. don't keep all those mega potions, no. which I would have loved which to is have a, kept. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Just saying, yeah. Also, that level. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So I, I think there's something there for sure. I think that makes sense. There's. Yeah. Also, uh, comments. Uh, check us out. I think there's some other very small differences between the demo and the main game. There's one that I don't want to get into. It's a little spoiler. Sure. But I was like, okay. I played the demo. And I'm like, I think this is different. I think it's like oh, okay. a subtle little thing they're hiding. Oh, wow. oh really? I think so. Cut the stream and tell me. Okay. It goes a little something like this. Bow, wow, wow, bow, wow, wow, wow. They have a second verse to the stand thing. Uh, let's see. Yeah, Chris Powell played the piano for four hours. His hands fell off. He Prove says, it. Side note, the music in this game is ridiculously it's good. so good. So good. The, How about you guys, like... Um, do you guys play with like headphones on? Do you guys like what, what kind of setup? Oh. I, I just noticed like I had such an appreciation. I had headphones in. It's more of an appreciation for like the bassiness of uh, the Nibelheim like soundtrack in the background. Um, it's I mean, so good. Yeah, it's so good. I have like a I don't know like a decent like sound decent bar and yeah, decent yeah, yeah, sound yeah. bar and like subwoofer and stuff. And yeah, like, I have a sound um, bar. It's just but it's not. It's not the same. Not the same. Yeah, and I have like some uh, out of the. The basic cut in a jumping way ahead to the fire section. Yeah. Um, that like 
bassy electronic tone that was like the undertone for Sephiroth in the fire scene. Oh, was okay. The freaking coolest. Cool, yeah. cool, yeah. cool, yeah. And if we're going to talk about the music, the they did this in the first game too, in Remake as well. Um, you built. We've all heard Let the Battles Begin like a thousand times yeah. Yeah, yeah, in yeah. our lives, yeah. but they hold it back in this until you get to a crucial moment. It's the uh, the boss battle with the Materia Guardian. Right. Yeah. And then it kicks in and you're like, this is the coolest song ever. I know, I know, I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah totally. Uh, the music part that hit me the hardest in this was when you see Tifa for the first time. And it's like, it eventually bleeds mm. into Tifa's theme a little bit, but it's like, just... I, I, I'm searching on YouTube. I can't find that track because it's like new version of Tifa's theme. It's not exactly that because they, they have also Tifa's so theme many in here. little variations. I think like like yeah. when you're looking at like the remake Spotify, it's like all, you know it's like 200 tracks, and I think it's a hundred like, of them are like Mako Reactor theme right. variants. Like, like, yes, yeah. yeah, oh, a hell. very slight variation, and so it's it's going to be one of those. Yeah, the, <laughs> it's going to be interesting just trying to find the one that you want to hear going through like a hundred different tracks. But yeah, yeah. but even like on the hinting front and kind of melding a bunch of stuff together because then I believe it's in the Materia Guardian fight they also have hints of the Valkyrie boss theme which is some of my favorite music from Remake which is like so chapter nine when you're up top like the helicopter things like the dun 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 okay. dun 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 it's such a good song and they use it in like an early trailer and like they hint at that in there as well as well as like One Winged Angel is just like yeah. seeping yep. everywhere it's oh my god another music moment um, when Sephiroth first walks up to the Genova door. It plays like the, I think it, the word for it is the arpeggio of the Genova song. Ooh, it's like oh, this amazing thing, thing like, like do, 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 yep. do. Oh, do yeah. they but really? But it's really slow and ominous. It's mm-hmm. so good. Yeah. Uh, uh, That's very cool. Alex P writes in, says, somehow a two hour demo has already convinced me that Final Fantasy VII Remake soundtrack has already been supplanted as my favorite video game soundtrack. <laughs> <laughs> From Sephiroth's hilariously heroic theme to the masterful way in which Tifa's theme is introduced and incorporated into gameplay before being reimagined this soundtrack had me aching with nostalgia for a time in 1997 that i never actually got to experience myself wow. as if it were from some misremembered past of my own wow. oh, it's beautiful <laughs> fred de well, writes mean, in and says this is bad actually um he says it feels like a sin but i had to lower the music volume slider in the settings to be able to hear the voices is anyone else having an issue with the volume balance in rebirth just mm. a couple scenes where really? it feels like the music is a, a couple notches too loud. I noticed mm-hmm. it as well. Yep. Yep. It's okay. a weird really? specific thing. Yeah, Bryce I have Gilbert. Some, I have some titles on, so I guess it doesn't, really, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. doesn't really bother me. Yeah, it's a it's a thing, all right. Um, but, yeah, we're setting out on the big big trip, heading out to the reactor at this point. Um, and Tifa comes out, the most amazing theme music ever starts playing. And I just, I'm a sucker for... It just makes me feel bad that I don't remember it. The, the the scene the, like yeah the the moment that he like just that, for that, that, that thing? yeah that she comes comes running up and you is like hey I'm your it? guide yeah the music Can, yes okay here we go all right and everyone is hot in every final oh, shut up shut up me so. stop talking yes sir I think you guys are all silly the <laughs> only hot character in front of us oh, is Brian take <laughs> more hot Brian this <laughs> song is Tifa. You can still back out. You don't have to do this. I'm going, and that's that. There'll be two soldiers with me. I'll be fine. Pumpkin. I have goosebumps for this one. Good morning, sir. I'll be your guide for the day. Tifa? Ooh, that is good, yeah. And okay. then it slowly That's transitions into yep. Tifa's theme from that. Yeah. Are you kidding me? It's just completely new. They're not allowed to make new good stuff in this game. <laughs> By the way, Tifa's voice actor, I think Britt Barron is her name. She Ooh. is fantastic. She, wow. she was in Glow. killing it. She oh, really, really is, yeah. Yeah, she, she was Mark me. Maron's daughter, that character. Oh, really? Oh, okay. oh, really? Oh, funny. She was at the preview event, and that was, really? that was maybe my peak geeking out. I was like, oh, geez, it's so weird to like hear Tifa's voice coming out of this person's <laughs> mouth when I'm talking yeah, to yeah, yeah. her. Cannot Didn't you say that Barrett's uh, voice actor has a Minnesota connection? He played football uh, at the U, oh, University so cool. of Minnesota. Um, yeah, he was he was very sweet. Um, let's see. Oh, anyway, so going to the mountain. But uh, what kills me is T on this section, being like, "Good morning, sir. I'll be your guide." To like, yeah. Her again, geeking out about Sephiroth and everybody calling him sir. Like, especially there's that father in the town who's like, "Don't hate." Don't bother Sephiroth. Like, leave it. Like, everybody, <laughs> right, like, yeah, yeah. Leave such Sephiroth a good comment. Yeah, yeah. It's such a weird, twisted world where, where everyone's like, hey, be cooler on Sephiroth. Just don't annoy him. That's the worst thing we could do to Sephiroth is have yeah. a child piss him <laughs> off. Um, beating down Brian. 
writes in and says, What impressed me the most about 7 Remake was their ability to take what were small sequences in the original game and really flesh them out. Yeah. My biggest worry for Rebirth was I felt it was going to be a much harder task here, just given there's so much more game to cover. Yeah. However, as I left Nibelheim, while credits played and the music swelled, I spotted the reactor in the distance at the top of the mountain. I said to myself, there's no way we're actually climbing the whole ass mountain. Before proceeding to spend the next hour climbing a whole yes. ass mountain, yeah. worry alleviated, says Beaten Down Brian. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm on. I'm on both sides of this one. Oh, uh, I, I mean, this in the original game. This is <laughs> this is minutes. Yeah. Uh, th- yeah. There are some things in this section that genuinely annoyed me. Yep. I can't think <laughs> um, of what you're talking about. <laughs> I, I can't possibly imagine. <laughs> I don't. I don't need little. Traver- I know it's like loading screens and stuff. I don't need or want to see little traversal sections that just sure sure that, ju- that just don't. Do anything to move like the squeezing whatsoever. through a uh, yeah. yeah. narrow pass. Yeah, yeah. it's really funny. I, I was trying to refresh my memory about Intergrade, and I went back to our deepest dive in Intergrade. And yeah. look, YouTube comments. I love all of you. You're all blessed children under God. Yeah. But the top comment on <laughs> our deepest dive for Intergrade is like, "You idiots! <laughs> it's on PS5, and that's why there's not a squeeze through sequence because they don't need to do it anymore. That's why it couldn't be on PS4." <laughs> it just makes me laugh. Now it's another PS5 exclusive. I mean, there's a squeeze through section <laughs> so early on. So well, yeah. Go ahead and delete that comment. If you have honor, sir, like our good man Sephiroth, you'll delete that comment. Who's the idiot now? Um, Brandon H. writes in, and they say, Knowing Grant's love for holding down Triangle to perform simple actions, oh, man. I can only imagine how pumped he was to get to hold down both R2 and L2, then repeat it multiple times to turn off the valve in the reactor. I love that. Brandon says that's a top five Final Fantasy moment of all time for me, and I can't wait to see how they incorporate the mechanic more over the next hundred hours with the game. <laughs> I thought when he was mentioned L2, R2 was going to be the crawling through the oh, fire. Oh, we'll get to that. Yeah, that was, no, that yeah. was certainly up there. The, the valve was great. That was a legitimately great moment, because it just every turn is like higher tension, right? Yeah. 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 What is Sephiroth getting up to in that other room? Yeah. Something bad is about to happen. I love it. <laughs> Did you really yes, love the valve? it was good. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hey, we're right. being sarcastic about the <laughs> Ross, Valve fan number one, yeah. but not the company, just actual Valve's games. Uh, valve is better than Final Fantasy VIII as a whole. Whoa! Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> this is ultimate chicken whistle over here with that kind of talk. Uh, the, uh, if we went back to play the original, you know, and it's funny, we got completely stumped because oh, we played through Cloud fast. Because in the original, Sephiroth does the same thing where he's like, Cloud, Got to turn turn that valve for me, buddy. Really? <laughs> and then, so Come we went on, back to the valve, and the valve is there where it is in Rebirth, but you can't interact with it. And it turns out in the oh, original, really? he says, "Turn the valve," and what you do then is you, you go, go up to, to the, one like, of the, the thing, and yes. press a button. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. they actually made the valve that he says in the original game a valve that will take a very <laughs> so long time. In this is just yeah. something that bothered a developer from <laughs> Square yeah, in the yeah, '90s, yeah. and he's like, "We got to get that valve to be a real it's not valve." Yeah. Twenties. 20 plus years later, you made me look like a jackass on stream trying to, <laughs> <laughs> trying to twist a valve. It was, yeah, we lost a lot of followers that day on Twitter. I know. <laughs> the number, numbers were plummeting. Uh, Bernard L. is with you, though, Grant. They say, while walking up that mountain, every time I turned off the main path, Cloud would start walking at a glacial pace. Yeah. It's like, okay, okay, I get it, game designer. You want me to rush straight up to, uh, the path so your cinematic opening looks great? But what if there are chests over here? And I, I think Patrick Polk writes it with a perfect comment for a lot of uh, this chapter saying, uh, I feel the running speed is so fast and the forced walking speed is so slow. Yeah, <laughs> sure. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. then there's a whole nother level of forced walking speed behind that godforsaken vacuum that is the <laughs> slowest <laughs> steps I've ever seen. Wait, I kind of like that. Grant, you come to our house and you insult the Mako vacuum I in my basement. Absolutely. The Mako vacuum. With my child sleeping above your head. You're going to come here and insult the Mako Who's vacuum. Who's cuddling with a Mako vacuum. <laughs> it's a <first> toy. <laughs> Love that vacuum. If people don't want us to fanboy out the whole time, Mako vacuum. Yeah, okay. So that was the one thing. I, I just like, I like, I had this one kind of like moment this with, with Grant where like we were talking like in... Like around Final Fantasy VII, I had this whoa, just. Whoa, in, you I, just I just had this one shut moment. Up, whoa, whoa, shut up! Shut up! Shut up! You were talking <laughs> just, about rebirth I just had behind this my back. Moment. Look! Look! We got to <laughs> What do you mean you got it? The whole point is not <laughs> And it, it was veiled and anyways, shrouded. In I think it was. Yeah, it was one thing where he, <laughs> he just said like there was. You made some indication that you were 
that something kind of upset you. <laughs> Teetering on the edge of the And like I remember it's just like, is this window? cinematic no. or is this <laughs> gameplay? And you said gameplay. And I thought to myself, like, oh my God, like this is like a core thing that you have an issue with and you like and you said all you just said is you'll know when you see it and i'm thinking to myself like this is like i wonder if they did they, did they mess with materia and then i got to the mako vacuum and immediately i'm like oh this is of, of course this is what this is and then they do it again and like court's not long enough oh, man. court ain't long enough this time what are you gonna do about that I, so- I played this section more than once. Yeah. And the second time, I tried to open the door and then do it all from that side. Oh, no, you can't. No. <laughs> yeah, because no. I did the same thing. That would yeah. be too I did easy. the exact same thing. <laughs> hey, maybe I'm just a pro vacuumer, but I never heard that message the entire time. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Very good, man. Um, oh, my God. It, it is, I mean, it's such a funny impulse, and... It's so I got to interview the games director. Did the you Max's ask about the Mag- No, but it was on the list. <laughs> like, yeah, and it's like question the first. <laughs> that's the thing. It's like, first they day. made this incredible game. I and then you do this? with the translation. I have fifteen yeah. minutes, and it's like I, maybe I'm not a robot of enough. But it's like God, am I going to spend one minute of those fifteen minutes talking about why did you make the bad r- vacuum? The yeah. game is a dream come true, but there are like 45 seconds of it that are so stupid. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, yeah, I just yeah. couldn't bring myself to do just it. Dial, yeah. dial the speed up double and I'll be fine. Like, hypothetically, do you enjoy vacuuming your own home? Because <laughs> I, I, I do it. Great, you really I, thought about this. Actually. I do not enjoy it. Yeah, I, <laughs> But imagine there's patches of Mako that could like uh, poison you. Hey, the thing that really bothered me about it is it went from like, 20%. To 70%. To 70%. Yeah. yeah, I know. <laughs> How? I don't know. Oh, it was, it was that. It's a lot I, of flaws I, here. I know it's it's dumb and nitpicky, but the the yellow jumping sequence, too, I, I don't... Yeah. I don't yeah, need yeah, it. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't yeah. want it. The, put, yeah. A, put a ladder there. It's going to do the exact same thing. Yeah. Uh, Andrea R. writes in and says, I really enjoyed exploring uh, Mount uh, Nibel. N- Nibel. Yep. And yeah. the dialogue between the characters. I was having fun climbing rocks and just looking around. I'm not sure why people are complaining about the yellow climbing areas when Horizon Zero Dawn does the same thing to show you where your characters can grab. And that's why I stopped playing Horizon. <laughs> I yeah. think that's what doesn't people mean, are Doesn't mean by. that it's right. You know. <laughs> so, I mean, yeah. I mean, the game's director of Rebirth, he is a big Horizon fan. Sure. And so it is just like, for a game where it's a, in the opening, you're climbing up this mountain area. It's like, all right, are we going to confuse people? How handholdy should we be about exactly what areas are climbable, which aren't? Because I'm not. It's. it's just I get like, why it's there, and it doesn't annoy me at all. There, but it's, but it's it also noticeable. really yeah. doesn't make sense as to why it's yellow, though. No. I mean, like, so you like notice it. So you I notice understand it. that, but is there is that really the best way to yes. show? Yes. Would you rather have yellow? Then it, why not have a holographic like blue arrow like they have on the ground sometimes? Yeah, I okay. think I would rather have that because that to me, which is obviously just something the player is seeing and not the characters. Right, rather than just like somebody being like, "Well, this is the only way up. We can't get a ladder up here, so I'm going to spray paint exactly where." Like that to me, that doesn't make any sense yeah. whatsoever. And, and when I they, mean, when they crumble, have you seen everything else that happens in the world of Final Fantasy VII? Yellow yes. spray paint <laughs> takes you out of it. When they crumble and break, too, it's just like, why? Like, what are we doing here? I mean, it is, what is absolutely this? a thing. In even this section here of just like there's and you know remake has the same stuff where there's just there's gameplay for the sake of gameplay and it's just yeah. I think the idea from the developers is like well we need to change up the pacing even the squeeze through if it's not technical in the situation it's like we need to slow people down every once in a while change up how they're running through this so it feels like there's more variety in what they're doing but, yeah I can understand that but I can understand so much that. of that comes down to just like wait alright you want me to hit L2 slowly and then R2 like no one's more immersed because of this I right mean, it's they're a little bit stuck design wise, but yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. I I mean, when we're taking a literal like min- minutes long section into an hour plus, it, I don't need five more minutes of immersive slow gameplay. I just, I just don't. Yep. yep. But I mean, like even still, if you were to take like, if Cloud is climbing up like a rock wall, and in a way like if you kind of see him like almost do actual climbing, that would be more interesting to me than just like yellow jump. Yellow jump, yellow jump, yellow jump. You know what I mean? I think there's still some ways to make it interesting. Uh, case more, like Zelda, uh, Breath of the Wild. Like I, like, I mean, that's not fair because Link can climb anywhere. <laughs> no, but I, I know. But but what I'm saying is, this is like you're still watching him kind of climb. Cloud I think should have a climbing bandana that he can wear to make <laughs> yeah, him go yeah, faster. Just something. <laughs> yeah, big stole it. Um, Yaro wrote in yeah. and saying. <laughs> Saying the dichotomy between yeah that wasn't worthwhile saying. Was <laughs> I, I didn't say that. I didn't say. 
<laughs> Can you preempt me next time I say something that's pointless? <laughs> Yar wrote in saying, The dichotomy between the opening areas and Remake versus Rebirth is immediately noticeable. Rebirth has a town, the mountain pass, inside the reactor to back at the manor. It's in stark contrast to the very claustrophobic opening to Remake with all the with all taking place on small streets or inside the reactor, the more cramped feeling of remake made for the made for a feeling of tension. Rebirth, on the other hand, feels so open, and the new traversal button yeah. gives me the feeling of excitement to explore the vast lands upcoming. I'm so looking forward to cha- to the change in this direction. You should have read that before we just went on a rant about all that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we all be like, you know what? That thing of Mako is actually pretty cool. Yeah, it is interesting that. At this point, it's like, gotta watch out for Mako. You can get Mako poisoning. And then in the beginning of Remake, also, remember the whole thing of like, hey, if you fall in that like, Mako pit, you're gonna get poisoning real bad here, buddy. Yep, it's like, it's fun that both games open with that. A, a minute after you're done vacuuming up Mako, you go into a cave full of it, and they're like, well, we can't avoid they it here. So they might as well dive into the crystal. crystal. Head yeah. first into some Mako. But you notice that they have like the detection meter, so if you get closer to an enemy, it's like starting to detect you. And if you stay stealthy, you can actually see a lot of the enemies like vacuuming up Mako. <laughs> like the, the materia guarding just slowly. Nature is healing itself. <laughs> it's like the cord stuck on a slack tight. Like, <laughs> 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 um, Ryan D says Cloud's physical movements seem glitchy and being constantly forced to slowly walk instead of running over specific ta- terrain is getting annoying but if he ends up yeah. getting another HJ this will be a 10 out of 10 <laughs> how <laughs> dare you Ryan this is a respectable series where there's only one HJ scene in remake is that a crime well Rebirth can write those wrongs now <laughs> It is it is funny like you know outside of the yellow for like walk up this wall and all this stuff like I do have those situations of like, can I navigate this terrain? Then Cloud's just like, bloop, like he's jumping <laughs> right. like 20 feet. Like, yeah. What is happening? It's like one step. Is It's soldier first class, bro. Sure. <laughs> it's tough terrain. If the, if the deer can do it, so can he. That's exactly it. Pokey writes in and says, did anyone else get a good chortle over the wild deer's jump animations during the opening credit walk-up? <laughs> yeah. Just propelling 10 feet into the air with locked knees. <laughs> <laughs> putting, the, putting the Zell in Gazelle, bro. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. Yeah. And then he's like, they follow him around and just like, oh, 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 jump and then just kind of like get lodged in a wall and then slowly fade out. It's like, Ah, uh, the majesty. Us talking <laughs> about this game having an endless budget. It's like, wow, there's got to be a limit somewhere here, folks. Found it. Not for deer. Not for deer. Pl- plugged it all into freaking vacuums. <laughs> <laughs> but that vacuum model, <laughs> incredible. If it they was. released a toy of that Mako vacuum, are you kidding me? Do we have a, a vacuum enthusiast to the level of camera enthusiasm? That it's can coming tell us? up a little bit later. Thank yeah, you. Thank you're going to freak I, out. Genuinely, if they released a home vacuum that was a Maku, Mako vacuum <laughs> theme thing, they would make a profit off that, right? Only if I have to walk at a Tonberry speed around my house. <laughs> <laughs> Be a Tonberry robe. <laughs> Zach H. writes in, it says, I like how Sephiroth lets Cloud go and fight the monsters alone on the way up the mountain oh, to show yeah, off yeah. for Tifa. What a sweetheart. Yes. Yep. Go See, those are those little moments. Where is, I just, is he I showing off it. or is he just... Um or is he just, you know, sloughing off on the job? He's just, no, I, I I get the sense that he's just like... He's, he's like, come Cloud, on, man. He's letting Cloud show about? Yeah, yes. I think so. Yeah, totally. You don't yeah. think Sephiroth's just tired of... No. No? Nope. Okay. No. Nope. All right. I thought it was interesting that it defaults to once Sephiroth joins your party, right? Yep. His beautiful icon mm. pops on the screen. Incredible. Mm-hmm. Top 10 icon. Um, it's crazy. That, it sets him to party leader, right? Yep. I actually didn't like that. I feel like every time you get into a fight, then it's like, bloop, and the camera shifts over to Sephiroth. It does, like, I yes. Just, I, if I could run around to Sephiroth, I'd like it, but I'd rather just switch to him manually so it's not that weird pop sure, for every single No, it, it you're wrong him on that, to though. Yeah, I know. The, the combat leader, but yeah, not the exploration portion. Yeah, which is right. kind of interesting that, like, of course, I suppose you have to keep it kind of, like, on cloud, but you can do that, like, yeah. So. Um, by the way, I guess, did we talk about how cool the opening was with the music and the credits uh, popping up at the same time like the overworld theme as you're starting to climb up that mountain I feel like we danced around it but just acknowledging that the right. credits scene yes, yeah, 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 John yeah, yeah. C. Yeah, wrote the, in about the, it thank you John yeah, uh, just incredible yeah, looks fantastic um, Don't Bash Ash writes in and they say I found myself studying every interaction between Sephiroth and Cloud mm. since Sephiroth asks why am I telling you this as they're right. entering Nibelheim it's like he can't help but to indulge Cloud it when, just seems like he likes Cloud yes, like in, in yes. some way that just like he has an affinity like he just like to a degree that pro- Cloud doesn't probably appreciate you know well, what do you mean yeah he does he's telling the stories and then and then just you know guys then Sephiroth 
just laughed at my little quip <laughs> yep. as we walked together. He gave me a knowing smile while I showed off for Tifa. <laughs> and then we did this move. We did this move like where we're both attacking at the same time and his hair is flowing, my hair is flowing. We look at each other and we said our hairs are flowing. Anyways, any other questions about my past? Uh, don't bash Ash rates in. They say, I found myself studying every interaction. Um, yeah, when the photographer wants to take uh, Sephiroth's picture for posterity, yeah. it's not Tifa's playful pout that convinces him to turn oh, for the sure. portrait. It's Cloud yeah. saying, it's just one photo. Come on, where's the harm in that? Yeah. Then as they're climbing to the reactor, he senses that Cloud wants to show off for Tifa, so he step back, steps back and lets him take the battles yeah. on his own. That is until Tifa is almost in- injured. Why is he so indulgent of Cloud here? Would this have been what he was like in the original version of the game? Or is this how he acts when there's maybe some part of him that knows that he's about to rip everything away from Cloud? Mm, I don't view it that way. I think they're going for like, this is Sephiroth that was a Sephiroth at the end of Remake, which I don't think it's that Sephiroth. If we want to no. dive right down into the rabbit hole of Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Remake theories and all nope. that stuff. Ross, you're about to gear up Ooh, for... Uh, that lost me for a second. I, I was... So you're saying... The Sephiroth that we are seeing in this uh, flashback is not the same as the one at the end of Remake? That's the idea. Okay. So <laughs> so we talked about it a little bit like in the last yeah. episode of The Deepest Dive for Remake, but it seems, yep. like, seems like what's happening here is the big theme is in Remake, Sephiroth seems to know too much. Aerith yeah. also has a confusing knowledge of what's going on yes. and what's going to happen in the future. Yes. Like, basically in Remake, Aerith is just like... This ain't adding up, team. This ain't right. And yeah, yeah she's the conduit of just like something is something is awry here. Yeah, right. she has knowledge beyond her personal experience. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And Sephiroth in the game knows. He knows a lot and he's very cheeky. And if we're talking about the end of Remake, I mean, the simple explanation uh, is when Cloud uses Omni Slash at him and in the void and he's like like blocks it completely he's like right. oh not so easy this time buddy <sighs> you know and it's I like, don't remember that yeah. okay yeah right. go away, <laughs> go remember how the end of remake <laughs> yeah it was confusing uh, yeah. but there's cool stuff in it oh absolutely yeah. um so that is what's going on here yeah. right is like I, this is not that sephiroth so it seems like the leading theory and i don't know to be clear i don't know but it seems like the leading theory is there are kind of two sephiroths now there's a sephiroth from the original game who's still out there that would technically be this sephiroth in cloud's past and then it seems like there's another, another Sephiroth who knows a lot, and his he has a different plan. Um, a cosmic Sephiroth. Yes, some sort of cosmic Sephiroth. Yeah. Um, oh, okay. And so he's in the picture as well. And so gotcha. this wouldn't be that Sephiroth. But, gotcha, okay. Um, I swear to God, if any ju- of this is informed by Maximilian Dude, I'm going <laughs> to <laughs> just... <laughs> and it's only because you respect Maximilian Dude so much, right? Yeah, it's because he's just, he's beyond. Correct. It's, yes. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, right. on a completely different... <laughs> Tier. He's the cosmic Sephiroth, honestly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Is it so, Bizarro yeah. Sephiroth. Yeah, he's, he's Bizarro Sephiroth, yes. Yeah. And when we're talking Sephiroth just in this flashback scene, I think yeah. him being really cool and everything is just to uh, emphasize how bad it is when he goes over the edge, right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And they want to set up. Imagine if, like, yeah. you're a Star Wars guy, right, yeah, yeah. Imagine, like, if Anakin in episode one and two was, like, genuinely awesome. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Okay. You tell yeah. me this is pod racing. Is, it? <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, on, is awesome. there any moment in episode one or two where you think like Anakin is like genuinely cool? <laughs> anyway, uh, cool. No, <laughs> but I do like those movies. I know you like yeah. those yeah. movies. I'm just saying those movies do revolve around a main character, and there's nothing mostly cool when he about that character. Yeah. <laughs> Mostly when he did the genocide of a uh, of a uh, indigenous people. Okay, oh, all right, no, 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 that's no, no, Ross's cup of tea. I mean, he, he does pull Natalie Portman, so he's yeah, God, that's true. Kind of cool. I yeah. guess there's something there. Um, so yeah, I think so. <laughs> so Andrew B, jumping ahead just a little bit because I think it ties into kind of the Sephiroth. Fun yeah, because what's going on here? Because we've covered twenty five percent of all of this. So, <laughs> so Andrew B, coming in. Um, so okay. If you recall, uh, Remake, um, you were probably confused during this section, but if you remember the first time that we see Sephiroth in Remake in is Chapter alley? 2 in the alley. Yes, yes. yeah. Yes, and it's... It, Where kind of like Aerith... It's... Well, it's before Aerith. <laughs> yes. Where Aerith... She, yeah, where she splashes water on her face. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm saying. Um, yeah, Cloud is escaping still from the reactor bombing. Yes, yeah. and then it's and flames. Like, no, no, no. Sephiroth? Yes, yeah. and that's the idea. Is like if you didn't connect it, if you played remake, um, now this is it. I mean, you see, suddenly you go from Midgar in that alley to like burning houses all around him, and that is Nibelheim that they brought into remake. And I've watched that speech from Sephiroth so much because it is it's really odd because. 
the premise, I'm trying to remember, I think specifically he's like, we need to protect the planet, Cloud. And it's like, what is this? What are you saying, Sephiroth? Like, his first message to Cloud is that, and then he said something that we talked about on the Deepest Dive last time for Remake, and I was like, what is this? Like, I can track everything except for why he's saying, run, Cloud, run away, run far away. And I was like, that is such a weird line. Now, what does that mean? Why is he telling Cloud to run away? And it's awesome that in chapter one of Rebirth, it's like, here's your answer. And Andrew B. writes in about it saying, I was astounded when Cloud was making his way to his mom's house during the climax, only to discover that it's her voice that says some lines that Sephiroth said to Cloud in Remake. Oh, so it's, wow. In Rebirth, you get to hear Cloud's mom go, run, Cloud, run away. You have to leave. You have to live. Oh, They say it's utterly yes. brilliant to see this seed in the first part of the Remake trilogy. It cements Sephiroth as a total monster by taunting Cloud with his mom's dying words as oh. Sephiroth killed her. In remake, he's quoting Claudio that's, from this. That's, that is, uh, that's that a, is awesome. That's a pull I wouldn't have made. <laughs> no, that's the attention to detail not, I yeah. love. Yep. It's fun. Good catch. Thank you. I'm proud that I caught that too. Just because I've watched that scene so many times. It's like, what is that? Why is he wow. saying run away? Yeah. Um, let's see. So uh, Kanzan um, writes in and says, well, you know what? Let's keep talking about Sephiroth. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Jump cut to the year 2047. <laughs> Let's keep going. <laughs> what about what about What do we got? How's Ever Crisis doing? What do we got? How's the Patreon numbers? What are we doing? Come on. Here we go. Here we go. Let's talk about his belt buckle. You got a code for CSR Street. Just support us on Patreon. It's got a little wolf on it. Right, here we go. Have we talked about the wolf? We talked about the wolf. <laughs> that was a couple years ago, but we can talk about it again. Uh, Josh M writes in and says, "What else do we have to do around this table about Final Seven to get your support on Patreon?" <laughs> Josh M. writes in and says, Nothing proved my combat inadequacy more than what I would play as Sephiroth. Seeing cool guy Sephiroth flop and flail around in combat was crazy to see. Just, just gold, like magic harp in the combat. <laughs> oh, wait, what did you guys think about, uh, you think about combat? Playing as Sephiroth, all that good stuff. I freaking loved it. I freaking loved it. freaking loved it. I love that Freak, uh, you, you, could, it. you could... Keep making it spam his like triangle move, and it would just it would uh uh fill his limit gauge. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah, and and it, and it all it all culminated into probably the most disappointing limit gauge that I've ever seen. It was like called like Octo Slash, yeah. Octo Slash, yeah. Octo Slash, and I thought I thought it was like I was I was hoping for something a little bit cooler. Mm -hmm. What do you want it to be? Like, that's I only eight slashes. How, yeah, how, no, how, slash. how, how, how many is Omni? I think it's 15. Is it 15? This, I only know this because Twitch told me. Oh, okay, <laughs> As okay, I was okay, streaming okay, that okay. section because it was noticeable. <laughs> sure. yeah. I thought it was interesting that, like, okay, if you're Sephiroth and you're ready to parry, it's like, all right, you just got to hold R1 right, and right. then hit square. But I was always just, like, ready to go. And then the enemy would just be, like, going to town on cloud. I'm like, <laughs> hey, Mo, great warrior Sephiroth here. Ready <laughs> to go. Like, here we go. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> right over here. Legendary warrior. How would you come at me? I'm not um, interested. Yeah. So, Do I, you guys tend to block a lot in this game? Because I... Not as much as I should. Uh, maybe once or twice mm, for me. Ooh, interesting. So, I didn't remember that, um, yeah. that the parry was tied to Materia in Remake. Um, right, yeah, I suppose it was, wasn't it? Yeah, I needed I needed chat up for that one. Yeah. Uh, the parry system in this is great. Yes, anything to get that stagger bar up sooner is really satisfying. Oh, absolutely. Um, it's a good parry window too. After playing like, uh, I guess the last game I was playing with a, a tight parry window would be Liza P. Um, mm. And th this is probably a little bit more forgiving. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, gotta, yeah. you always got to do it earlier than I think you do. Um, sure. I'm I'm the worst ever at parrying. Um, mm. But playing it for the third time is starting to get the feel for like, okay, mm. I think I'm feeling slightly more confident in this. But yeah. also like when rolling is just that easy. Yeah. And also it, yeah. the thing that got it's just me like is, Elden Ring. I'm rolling exclusively. Yeah. yeah. I was going to say, yep. like, the, yep. the FromSoft games have shown me how abysmal I am at parrying. <laughs> Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah I'm, I'm a role man. Also, uh, it wasn't until this, this the game, way this game feels it is good, the way. Replaying yeah. uh, this section, also was like, oh, that's right. I always forgot this little tutorial pop up of like the importance of getting ranged attacks. Because if you roll and then attack, no, that'll do the ranged attack. Which I know is so that is such important. A, it is so important <laughs> because yeah, that's the thing that also yeah, exactly. It's the yeah. thing that launches you to a place where you can actually attack flying enemies. And it's just this weird. Like I feel like it could. 
like throughout the whole game, just be like, just so you're aware. <laughs> yeah. This still exists. We like, notice you, know. you haven't rolled and jumped in a while. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Keep that in mind. It's <laughs> very important. Barry cutting in like, I noticed one thing's missing from your story. Right <laughs> I got a gun arm, but you can roll and jump. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, Hilton writes in saying, my only complaint I still have is getting up to the flying enemies, at least with Cloud, yeah. during the first chapter. I hear ya. So roll. <laughs> yes. <laughs> roll so and then attack. I need like a Parappa the Rapper breakdown. <laughs> yes. yes. Yeah, but there's Do so the much stuff. the jump. <laughs> <laughs> like reading those little pop-ups again and again, it's like, oh, that's right. I forgot about that. Where it's like, um, hitting enemies if you have a staggered enemy if you hit them with your triangle attack when they're staggered then your ATB will fill up like twice as fast or something so oh, I was like, oh those are okay, things yeah, I yeah. always forget about in the combat yeah, yeah. of this game um, so I didn't even know that well, yeah, right say there. that so, one more time actually so, <laughs> so when an enemy is staggered if yeah. you attack with your triangle which is always your <laughs> special ability help. it'll refill your or fill your ATB gauge much faster okay yeah. hmm. it's just like little quirks Good like things that to know yeah well, they tell you, but I, I hear you, it's, it's easy to forget. Like, yeah, you know, that's yeah. the beauty of playing it, this again and again. Like, I'm usually switching amongst characters, trying to trying to build up, like, a base of ATB. So when they get right. to that stagger point, I can just go through each of their little, um, yeah. little you know, progress, yeah. progression loops there. Yeah. Now, do you guys think it's cool that we're all wearing blue plaid shirts? <laughs> well, I do. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's not cool I don't cool see why it wouldn't be. We messed, we messed up the gradient, though. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's late. I I should be over there. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. We yeah. can swap. We can swap. <laughs> it's all right. It's all, all right. right. You're, the in, the, thing you're is, in the host chair, too. I mean. Yeah. If you're in Minnesota and you're a guy in his 30s and it's late February. You're wearing plaid. The the mayor, our own mayor, has declared that you have to <laughs> yeah. wear blue plaid. The chief buckaroo. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Re-elect me. Wait, didn't our chief buckaroo tell us to wear cat blankets and... D- diddle her laptop. He did. Oh, he did. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Don't get us a start. Don't get us started on Jacob Fry. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> hey, Matt R writes in. He says <laughs> playing as Sephiroth was a blast and felt overpowered in a good way. Prediction time. Do you think we will play as Sephiroth again in this game or the next? No. It is. It's one of those things where like they're kind of stuck. And I get in I any o- in any other game. Well, hear me out. Don't be a jerk here. <laughs> here, man. In any other game, it'd be like, oh. End the podcast. <laughs> there's too no. much production value going into Sephiroth for this weird one-off thing. True. But if you're making this game and Cloud's passed, it's like, what are you going to do? Not have Sephiroth playable? Like, people would be pissed if he was in the Red 13 role that he was in Remake. I'm just kind of like, yeah. he's fighting yeah. next to you. So at that point, you need to go all out. He's a fan favorite. I don't think I would have minded. Really? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, I, I think we're past the era where like a rumor can take off about like here's how you play as General Leo again in Final Fantasy VI, or mm. here's how you. Um, Ooh, not familiar. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> or like <bring> Zell. <laughs> yes, <laughs> it's not like the Zell. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, uh, but I yeah, I, I'd love there to be like yeah, a, <laughs> just like a random like a random rumor like that you yes. would believe because you are fifteen and the internet has been around for two years. That right? You're like, oh yeah. yes, I can totally play Sephiroth again if I go and do five hundred squats in this one location <laughs> and then blah blah blah. Uh, I eat fifty sandwiches and do five hundred. Yeah, z- exactly. Z- z- like, arm lifts. <laughs> yeah. By the and way, they walk around on this tall grass. <laughs> so just clear, gonna spot. prediction time. I mean, no one thinks you'll play a Sephiroth again in this. Actually, I mean, you brought up a, a good point. Like, it does kind of feel like since they've done the work here, are we going to have some other time where we might actually like dive into and, and play maybe for like a even like a more prolonged period of time of Sephiroth? I don't I, know. I, it's I'm possible. No. I thought. And we talked about it in the deepest dive. Like, I feel like they're building to some version of this story where Sephiroth is going to be in your party fighting another version of Sephiroth. See, yeah. but if that's in part three, it'd be weird to have kind of the Sephiroth tutorial in part two, you know? <laughs> so then it's like, well, would they put that in this? Like, yeah. I mean, it feels like they should they structurally, can, but it doesn't make sense. Yeah. If they can call back Sephiroth in the alleyway telling Cloud to run for, yeah. for, like they've already for four seconds, this, yeah. then who knows what's on the... Right. On the table for the third game. And I would say no, but they just make such a big deal about, hey, that we are unbound by the chains of fate now. Anything right. can happen. Yeah. Right. You know, they, yeah. they go so heavy on that that, you know, anything's on the table, I guess. Yeah. So wait a second. Are you saying yes or no? I'm saying no. You're saying no? Yep. <laughs> You're saying no? Yeah. I'm going to say yes. In this game? <laughs> Commit. <laughs> <laughs> yes. 
<laughs> yes, I, I it's say gonna yeah. happen in this game. You will play Starfield again. I will say yep. part three. You're gonna play Starfield. Yeah, that's the safe bet. <laughs> <laughs> Don't attack me. Oh, have we talked about how when a Sephiroth moves, it's just called Hellgate? Right. And it's like so early on, they did the two where it's like diving from above and do that stab. <laughs> yeah, no, Hell's absolutely. Gate, everybody. Yeah. Um, Andy D writes in and says, uh, I really like the change to Punisher mode for Cloud in that he now teleports slightly to deliver the attacks instead sure. of the wide swings he did in the first game. It feels like a good way of showing that he's more powerful than he was in the first game. Yeah. Even though this would be technically before the first game, but I hear what you're saying. Mm, yeah. Um, Andy D. Uh, yeah, Punisher mode is always so satisfying. Just so, so swirly. And I like it that like, okay, just don't roll. Don't roll. Like, yeah. always don't, don't roll. Yeah, that's the thing. Yes. Don't mode. roll. Yep. Also, don't hit triangle like twice in a row because you're so excited to get into Punisher mode. Yep. <laughs> yeah, <that's, laughs> yep. Uh, Tyler E says, boy, I wish there was a jump button like in Kingdom Hearts. <laughs> and then Leaf writes in and says, the jump mechanic in this game, when you spam it, it makes you feel like you're in a kung fu movie flying all over the place. So yeah, there's not a jump button, but you're certainly in the air a lot yeah. Yeah. if you're doing it correctly. And it feels like once you're in the air, you can stay in the air pretty easily if you're just right. hitting that button over yeah. and over again. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I, uh, like, I like the enemy juggling too for, for smaller ones too. You can oh, just keep them, keep them stun locked until they get staggered. Super fun. Super satisfying. Uh, let's see. Shango Kongo says the addition of a perfect block for Cloud is great. Yeah, Not is. being able to guard, ranged, or magic attacks in Punisher mode pushes the player to switch to Operator mode, and now you can time your blocks in Operator mode to negate damage and increase stagger. It's this yep. kind of smart design that made me fall in love with the first remake, and I'm falling in love with its sequel all over again. Yeah. If there's anything that can like break up the the mashiness too and just give me something else to focus on, uh, greatly appreciated in these combat sections. Yeah, it's huge. Um, cons on relative um right and they say some great visual storytelling relative some, <laughs> <laughs> some great visual storytelling in the collapsing bridge scene while the rest panic sephiroth calmly analyzes his best move before dropping down to save as many as possible this scene both depicts how cunning an adversary sephiroth is while also showcasing a more sympathetic side to him that we haven't seen uh it is the best uh cheers from kentucky brock is that your full name, Brock? They write in saying, uh, brand new member here and first comment. Wow. Nice. Welcome. Make it a good one. Did the second... <laughs> oh, Pressure's on. There we go. <laughs> Did the second soldier during the flashback peak anyone's interest? He doesn't say much because there's the two guards, right? Mm -hmm. He doesn't say much and was only briefly touched on in the OG7, but I couldn't help but notice the particular words used when he's washed downstream. Sephiroth simply shakes his head and says, he's in fate's hands now. Mm -hmm. It just struck me as a very particular wording based on how Remake played out and how much it focused on the story of fates. I can't help but, mm. but pontificate if he might show up later in the game. Does anyone know <laughs> if the soldier that was swept away shows up in any peripheral books or games I'm not familiar with lore-wise? I had that same thought uh, just with how much they are like destiny and fate and all that. It seems like they don't use those words very lightly. Wow. But and then again, if it's like it's Sephiroth and I think it's I read it as like a cheeky nod like, yeah. you know, for Sephiroth to be like, hey, kill fate, kill fate um, in remake. And now in this okay. situation, him just being like, I'm going to acknowledge that fate exists because we're still sure. earlier in the timeline. Yes. But okay. honestly, it's not a Roche origin story. Jonathan F. Oh wrote in. my god! Jonathan F. wrote in with that exact thing, saying that's why he hates Cloud. He's so obsessed with Cloud. Is a better way to put it is because that was wrote. That's Could have grabbed him, Cloud. That's that's. It. I hope that's not the case. I really Do you hope think that's like not the case. he washed down that stream off a waterfall and landed on a motorcycle. Hundred percent. Wow! Is a wheelie three sixty? <laughs> I just had a bit of any life is worth living. <laughs> See you in five years, <laughs> buddy. <Aluga. laughs> yeah. I'm on board with this until proven otherwise. Okay, <laughs> if you insist. Uh, God, have you guys seen this is absolutely Mi gonna happen. Ross, have you seen you Mitchell's versus the machines? <laughs> yes. <laughs> that joke. I always thought it, I kept thinking of Mitchell versus the machines during this sequence because it's like it's I think it's the hardest I've lived in an animated movie in the last 10 years. Mitchell's Words Machines, where they have that quick cutaway of like, Dad, you planned the vacation last time. And it's him, and they're like climbing along a cliff's edge during the downpour. And like, he's like, keep moving ahead if you want to live. <laughs> and then they just show a mule, because they were riding mules, but the mule gets swept down the river. And they're like, Prancer! And he goes, Prancer belongs to the canyon now! <laughs> that line is the funny And I kept thinking, yeah. this soldier belongs to the canyon now. Prancer is in fate's hands now. Oh, it's so beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> 
Um, Dan H writes in and says, in the scene at the Mako Spring, I thought it was inappropriate when Cloud brought the vacuum and tried to rip it. They're talking about the majesty of yours. <laughs> um, no, at the scene at the Mako Spring, Tifa talks about what would happen if you just put that vacuum up to the life stream. <laughs> that, that cord's not making it there. <laughs> just a bunch of extension cables. The monsters keep messing Cloud! <laughs> what are you doing back there? Oh, Cloud. <laughs> You'll never reach. It's a three-prong cable. <laughs> Ground it, Cloud. <laughs> Tifa talks about how continuing to use the Mako Spring for power will result in the springs disappearing. Yeah. When Cloud asked where she heard such a thing, I adored how quickly and matter-of-factly Tifa sniped back with, My dad! Yeah. <laughs> Brian. <Murray. It, laughs> <laughs> don't you forget his name, Brian. <laughs> it reminded me of so many childhood arguments where you could use the gospel word of a trusted adult as a bulletproof point right. in your argument. Yeah, I guess it's very good. Is Tifa older than Cloud? Maybe by like a year. It'd be weird we're if saying. Aerith and Tifa were both younger. If if no, Cloud's I mom think, makes such a big deal about. I think Aerith is like that. She was older. Yeah, she is. She's like two or three years older. Yeah, she's an she? older girl. To yeah, follow him out when he's being a silly goose. Yeah, okay. I think well, so. Can we look up a bio quick? Do we know? You can. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I I love this scene also because Cloud is immediately like. Oh, uh, it'll never run out. The planet's huge. <laughs> oh, right, <laughs> right, right. Don't they try to like kind of like rope Sephiroth in to it too? Just like, like and he what ignores do you them of, completely. And he ignores them completely. Yeah. He's just like, Rrr. yeah. Well, they have the whole thing of just like, what do you mean magic? What is all this stuff? And right. I thought it was honestly playing this. I was like, this is a little forced. When Sephiroth's like, oh, I know you call it magic. That reminds me of this guy named Hojo. Yeah, like he's why really are we stupid. About Hojo? His, yeah, his predecessor was great, but it's <laughs> and I was like, I don't know about this writing. Yeah, this, the original almost verbatim. Oh, is it really? The exact same shoe uh, wearing of him talking okay, about okay, Ojo okay, in that okay, moment. Yeah. It's like, okay, well, I guess you get a pass. Yeah. You got to talk about it and that thing. Um, yeah, but Cloud being like, magic sure is weird, but I love the idea of Cloud has been like whipping tornadoes out of his hands and all these magic moves. And he's like, by the way, how does this stuff work? It's like, no, okay, right. you, you, are, you should be locked up, Cloud, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah, 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 for not yeah, understanding yeah. these tools. After an exhaustive search, uh, Tifa is a year younger than Cloud and oh. Aerith is a year older than Cloud. Oh, okay. Oh, okay, so yeah. Claudia only wants Aerith to date Cloud, which is weird because Tifa's right next door. She is yeah. saying that specifically knowing who Tifa is as a next door neighbor. Yeah. So oh my god, you're right. Yeah. That's, a, that's those, a loaded comment. Nope. She saw those orthopedic underwear. She's like, that's not, that's not up <laughs> to my son's not standards. For my son. <laughs> that doesn't even exist. <laughs> Translation error. <laughs> Did you hear my shirt's glitching? <laughs> Moogie writes in. I didn't notice you could find a comet material until my second playthrough of the demo. What? That's really exciting to me. That. How many little details I've been missing throughout the game that'll be great to discover in a replay. You guys yeah. have material? Comet material? Did you find that? No. Oh, I, I was, oh, it, was down, so. it was down a ladder. I didn't want to go down. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty late on, but it's fun to have. Does if an enemy is weak to fire, comet is fire? Comet. Think, comet, comet might be comet. physical. Is it? Kind of maybe. What was your? I said comet's comet. Comet's comet. <laughs> Could it be? Wind? I think it's physical. Let's go with comets are wind. I don't think it's fire. Do I see wind? Um. So, the big boss. Uh, how'd you all fare against Materia Guardian? Uh, Several deaths. <laughs> Is that right? <laughs> no, no. Okay. Right. <laughs> <laughs> did, did, yeah, did, 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 did fine. It was, yeah. It's non-elemental. Non-elemental? I'll be damned. So, if you can hit so with a comet, damage, that's just like yeah. a big punch. Yep. Yep. I guess I've never Makes been sense, right? Uh, yeah, Hot the Materia punch. Guardian, I felt like I still wasn't in the swing of combat yet. It takes me yeah. a long time in these games. Yeah. Okay. But it kind of, it feels like it holds your hand uh, through and... Yeah. 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 Even the, the thing like, oh, it's on the ceiling now. I'm like, I, I promise that won't be an issue. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I think yeah, they yeah. kind of, I guess it kind of, it hurts the narrative, right? If Sephiroth is like, I'm frankly stumped. <laughs> yeah, it's, like, it's, it's your poor performance review, not mine. Yeah, exactly. uh, I'm giving myself uh, an A because I freaking write it. <laughs> I am a little bit of a stinker. Cloud. Was that boss uh, like a big version of those little monstery things that we see in the pods afterwards? Mm. Oh, like the first kind of stretchy one that... Yeah, not the human-like one, but the like the little creepy Maybe. crawly ones. Maybe. I, honestly, I didn't think about that. Those, but Chase Klein wrote in about it saying, I thought it was pretty cool that the monsters on the way to the reactor were Chimera and what yeah. seemed like other mutated beasts, either from yep. the reactor or possibly as a byproduct of the Mako refining in the area and the Materia Garden. 
they say that was for sure a mutated behemoth, right? Hmm. Oh, okay. okay. That's an interesting yeah. idea. Sure. Yeah. I think like he should have been tougher if he was that. But sure. It was a, it was a but you were with Sephiroth. That's right. Um, that is important. And I do love when they get in there and then Sephiroth has that line, which I understand all these sickos on the internet are all about, where <laughs> Sephiroth is like, you're so excited. You're practically panting. You're like a little, oh, you're like a little, a little puppy. puppy dog. Come here. Let me scratch you under the chin cloud, you little <laughs> sick puppy. Oh, I'm excited. <laughs> Of course you are. <laughs> Do some squats to put some exercise. You dirty Turn puppy. Turn a valve. <laughs> Turn, Turn a valve. valve to cool off. <laughs> Hold L2 and R2 to pant a little bit. Yeah. I do like how much other people are... That If you're listening to this, that felt like an edit. It's not. I'm just abrupt and weird. But how much other people are saving other people on the way up the mountain. Like, there's a moment where the first flying thing is coming towards Cloud, and Tifa's like, hey And just right. does this yeah, awesome yeah. kick. <laughs> yeah. Uh, like Miss Piggy, and the flying thing goes flying. <laughs> there's another moment where something's coming towards Tifa, and, like, one of the guards saves Right, her. yeah, yeah. And, and yeah. Sephiroth even is like, good save. He has, yep. like, some line of, like, way yeah. to go, soldier. And yep. it's just a fun little throwaway line. Um, and then that soldier, the one who lives, has to keep Tifa out of the reactor right. as they go in to discover all that stuff, which I guess we haven't really talked about too much. But I love when they're going in to the reactor and having that discussion where Sephiroth's like, hey, look, man, we're going to see some weird stuff in here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and he's like, he's like, just promise me, no matter what we see, you won't tell a soul. And yeah. I love that Cloud's like, you got it, boss. Meanwhile, he's telling people in calm yes, about all these true. things going on. Right, he right, right, tell right, the story right, right. about what he saw. In the yeah, it's past the statute of limitations. Yeah, yeah he's already right, attacking right, Shinra. Right. He's a terrorist at this point. Yeah. I guess it's okay. Yep, and um, I also love that Sephiroth is like, hey, keep it cool, Cloud. You're going to see some weird stuff. Don't yeah. go crazy and destroy the town or anything. Yeah. <laughs> no matter and what you read. <laughs> Maybe I'm missing something, but if he knows... If he has an idea of what's going to be in there, why is he so impacted by what he sees in there? I don't think I don't he, knows. Think I don't think he does know. That. I think all yeah, he knows okay. is that it's just like that this is one of the first market reactors and it's and it is headed by the R and D department. But that's And about then he knows that it. Hojo's a sick F. Right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Also yeah. he's expecting weird be, stuff, but yeah. yeah. Not. But he does have that line early on where he's looking out the window where he's like, Why is this place so familiar to me? You know, so he, he, he yes, has a little he does, suspicious yeah. like there's something about this that's going on, yeah. Um but I do love to just when they're walking into the reactor for the first time, where's there there's that line too where Cloud's like, why do you have to be so secretive? Like, we should be more transparent. And I love that Sephiroth's like, take it up with the president. Yeah, man. exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, I, of course, I channel everything through the lens of game development, but it's like, it has to be like a little reference to game development. Like, hey, take it up with Square PR, baby. I don't know. <laughs> so secretive. Uh, Doom Roy writes in, says, in general, I'm a big fan of most of the updates to the combat, but the return of boss fight damage gates really bums me out. It's so counterintuitive to a combat system built around saving your best attacks for limited stagger windows. I replayed Remake recently in prep for this game and had the issue again on nearly all the bosses. Meanwhile, the VR super bosses summons don't have the issue. Why is it so hard to have a segmented health bar or have the damage carry over the cutscenes? Yeah, that is frustrating. That's like Final Fantasy 16. In a nutshell, you hit your biggest uh, power, yes. and it only takes off a sliver to get to the next yep. little. Yeah. Just you know, you you're allowed to criticize anything in the world, Ross. Yeah. Except for Final Fantasy VIII and Final yeah. Fantasy XVI around these two weirdos. <laughs> I they love will, sixteen. They Talk will, about sixteen. Yeah. Yeah. I also love sixteen. <laughs> yeah. Wait a minute. Uh, that the room with the pods. Yeah. First time seeing that, it is just right. that feeling like God. This is so iconic. But yeah. Is it iconic or is it just that we all just played this game a lot and loved it? Where it's like, this is iconic scene in the game. But like Ross is somebody who like likes Seven, but it's not. Mm. As somebody who last it. played it 25 years ago or whatever, yeah. I remember the room with the pods. Okay. But okay. it's also like we've seen it so many times. Like, there's that anime version of it. I feel yeah. like it's just like over and over and over again. You like see that sequence, you know, if you're a Seven fan. So it does feel like just this room is going to be sweet. But it's yeah. so fun. Like, you know, when you're streaming it. Uh, you know, people in the chat are like, oh, I just love the way Sephiroth like slices up all those vents and stuff. Like everything yeah. just feels so good and impactful in this one room. And if you're following along for some reason, you haven't played this game. The premise is Cloud Strife, the hero of the world. Um, no, the idea is <laughs> Sephiroth goes in here and correct me if I'm retelling this incorrectly, but he walks in yeah. and he's like, oh, Hojo, you son of a gun. Yeah. These wacky experiments, what have you done? And then he looks up at the door and it says Genova. He's like, that's my mother's name. <laughs> Wait a minute. Surely a coincidence. Yeah. And then Surely smash cut to town in flames. <laughs> <laughs> it is, it is loaded up there and going like, oh, Christ. Yeah. So the idea is these pods are just where they're supposed to be compressing materia 
um, uh, doing yeah. some material, yeah, Mako experiments, that type of yeah. thing. Um, but then Hojo was like, what if we just put a freaking human being in there? <laughs> or, or just like other beasts. Like, right. like yeah. started with animals and then it seems like it went to like humans. Yeah. Then. Hear me out. What if we just see what happens? <laughs> what if we had a cool kind of like spiky, frosty head guy? <laughs> yep. who's Anybody? Gonna, Anybody? And you'll like look through the glass and be like, ooh. <laughs> what if we just did that? For like a little... Sure, Hojo. I don't. <laughs> your... Hey. Hey, turn the Jets band on the man. <laughs> Yeah, oh, I do like cool. that Sephiroth is like, hey, remember that Hojo guy that I helpfully mentioned uh, 45 right, minutes ago? Right, yes, <laughs> A yeah. couple of times? That's just storytelling, baby. Yeah. Um, Nate V says, I completely understand why they changed it for Rebirth, <laughs> as it would be a bit too silly, but I missed that in the original Final Fantasy VII, both Sephiroth yeah. and Cloud had to jump slash stand on tiptoes in order to look at the monster in the pod. Yeah. It's oh. just a lighthearted moment that would have been fun to see, but I'm happy with all the other craziness. I feel, Nate V, thank you for pointing that out, because Sephiroth is so tall in this game, and the original, yeah. they're pretty close. But like, I think it would have been a fun character moment if Sephiroth just looks in the tank. He's like, "Yeesh," and then Cloud. I'll have like, what he's having. <laughs> yeah, and if Cloud, yeah. And I can, like, <laughs> yeah, 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 hop on, Cloud. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Climb my you, hair, you little you puppy frog. Uh, Sephiroth uh, puppies. puppies. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do remember like something that was not in uh, uh, Rebirth, but was in the original. Was that he would look. He had Cloud look through, and then it, it had that like scene, didn't it? A cutscene, yeah. Yeah, cut, well, yeah. that was it. A cutscene, or just like a of like a still image of just this like it's the warpy like still the, image. Yeah. But then yeah. it does have the cutscene of the him cutscene then coming of him out. out. Like, I, I, I have like I, I, red I, legs. I want to say he does have it's red like legs. A, yeah. It's like a liquid effect over a still image type thing. Right. Yeah. For the still. Yes. 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 Yeah. Uh, but and they didn't. They didn't, he didn't look into that particular pod first in Rebirth, did he? I think and he says like he tells Cloud in, just to, to like, look in there, yeah. And then it, it pops oh, open, comes out, and then Sephiroth, he's like explaining, like, wait, was that just some experiment? And he has yeah, like a quick, he, like, just like a quick yeah. stab yeah. to that guy, which is so cool. It's so freaking cool the way he does that. Yeah. Um, and then this is where Sephiroth's mind shatters because he realizes that he was the also the created. Yeah, he was created in the lab by Hojo as well, and he's no different from any of these monsters. Some people, when I was streaming this on Twitch, were like, Hokey, this is the hokiest part, and like it is a tough turn to have. I think it's a tough like thing for the it actor is. to do as well. I mean, like, what if, what have I become? You know that type of <laughs> well, thing. But he's but not. He's it's not there yet. He's just like he has the hypothesis that yes. is this the, the the case, and as a result of that, then he goes and locks himself in the mansion to learn more about it. But he has like that initial fear response of like, oh my god, is this me? I need to learn more, and like that's. I, I, like why he I would imagine like he just goes yes. and like researches 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 and I do like it is a hard sell to have that moment like that realization that fear response that he has of like is this actually me how to communicate that in a way that doesn't feel hokey it's kind of it, tough yeah, yeah it happens so fast where we don't know, like, as an audience, that he's had any questions about his origin, really. Yeah, that's a good point. Like, yeah. we, we don't know that, like, he's just like, what the fuck? Well, like, you remember, know? like, in Ever Crisis, our favorite game. Yeah, I know. Like, okay, you're yeah, right. He right. literally is yes, walking around with a picture. Crisis. He's like, check it out. This is Genova. <laughs> Have you seen a picture of my mom? Remember that really? weird stuff? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Does. But it's not a picture of Genova, you know? So it's a weird twist. <laughs> Who's it a picture of? Uh, I don't want to say. Okay. Um, it's but it's uh, Claudia. <laughs> it's Claudia. But it's like hand drawn. <laughs> this is my dad. It's, uh, it's Brian and Claudia. Brian. <laughs> Have you seen Brian? <laughs> Has anyone seen Brian? <laughs> <laughs> Tom Bombaville says, for some reason, that scene when you're running up to the Shinra Mansion with the rendition of On That Day Five Years Ago, which is the music uh, playing, mm -hmm. really gave me chills. I felt the sense of foreboding destiny kicking off this epic adventure, and I loved it. Yeah, so running up to the Shinra Mansion for Cloud, this is what we talked about before, where he's in bed, and he's like, screw it, I'm going to go ask the big guy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then he's running up to is the Shinra that Mansion. Like, boom. Wait, how does that one go? <laughs> Just like that, just like that, you nailed it. Bum, bum. There's a bum in there. Bum. Is, that a, is that a minor or major bum? It's a minor bum. <laughs> okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Bum, bum. Yep. Yeah. Bum. yeah. It's a diminished seventh, I think. That's a diminished. That's a diminished seventh. <laughs> okay. But this is followed by a minor. So this is what you played on the piano for. This is what the first time. I mean, it was. <laughs> yeah. We all know you played gotcha. the opening to the Black Parade. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Admit it. I bet you Cloud loves that song. Right? <laughs> it's on my YouTube channel. Um, do we know who is in the painting in Shinra Mansion there? In- I do, but I don't think we should say. Okay. Because um, we're going to be fun and cool. About yeah. Jesus. Gotcha. Um, we tr- trust us. If there's ever a question, trust us. We know it. <laughs> I, I also, yeah. <laughs> um, but I, one of my favorite details again is like just those little pockets of lore. And when you're walking up to Shinra Mansion and they're talking about it and talking about like how this was built first and Shinra paying rent for the Shinra Mansion was how the whole kept the town. entire town alive yes. financially. Yeah. It's like that, like getting into the political history, political dynamics, and the economics of the world of Final Fantasy VII is like, I am so into this. No, totally. I, I Yes, I totally agree with you. And also, it's just, again, this kind of like weird thing because Shinra is not a, like a... Shinra does not have an inherent checks and balances system. They're not even like providing any sort of protection, yet they're still paying rent to this. You think they should be like, shut up, it's ours. I would imagine... like. In but Shinra it was a fashion. while ago, so I mean, yeah. they're definitely been ramping up how much of dicks they are, right? <laughs> sure, yeah, yeah, that's true. yeah. I'm sure at the start, and that's probably you know, well, what they could, what have been could like rent more... on that be ten, fifteen thousand gil a month? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's a drop in the bucket. <laughs> yeah, the second true. floor is pretty nice. The piano is broken. Yeah. Yeah. Really, I, I must have been in shallow dive mode because I saw that line about the Shinra paying rent, and I thought. Hmm. <laughs> Me and Ron, I thought I was panting like a little puppy. Yeah. Like, and to the the bed's like, how long was their lease? Yeah. <laughs> I, I talked Are about they it. still paying? What's the square footage on that thing? <laughs> <laughs> I don't see any bathrooms. <laughs> Seems like a flip. Um, <laughs> no, but I talked Good about Good bones, it. but you have to bring your own creativity if you want to live A lot here. of water damage. <laughs> I talked about it in Bonus Pod, which is our Patreon exclusive podcast. If you unlock the podcast version of This Deepest Dive by going to patreon.com slash minerals with twins, you also get our weekly bonus podcast called Bonus Pod. But I talked about it there, but um, I was very lucky at the last press event, I got to have dinner with Hamaguchi, who's the game's director, mm. and I specifically geeked out with him about that moment. I was like, the line about rent yeah, for the yeah, Shinra yeah. Mansion, I'm like, where does that come from yeah and he's like oh that's 100% Nojima and Nojima is kind of like the story architect for the original 7 Very cool. and, and 7 where he's like he's like yeah that, he's obsessed with that level of granularity in this world of, I like, love it yeah he also loves rent for the Shinra man <laughs> <laughs> this is, this is what yeah. we love man it's so fun can you imagine how much of that type of information is in like the story bible for oh this? I would love to see that bible yep Show me that Bible. The good book, because I call it the Final Fantasy VII story Bible. <laughs> um, so, Shinra Mansion. What do y'all think? Seeing it. Living it. Take it or leave it. Take it or leave it. <laughs> I was a little surprised there wasn't more uh, areas to walk around in. Yes. yes. Yeah, that, that was the first thing for me. I, 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 like, it's it's weird that immediately I'm like, well, let's go upstairs. And it's just like, oh, I can't do that. Okay, and dude. I don't know why that I, like, why would I want to go upstairs? But why, just the fact that you, you can. Safe? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's true. I mean, and also if we're playing, if we're going off the original. You, You're exactly right. Yeah, yeah. That's where we would go. So. Yeah. Yeah, that to me felt like like okay, it's it's a little bit more simple, uh, but also like there's some like I remember like walking around and like there being this one place where it's just like they have like you know just like six or seven chairs around like it's like a piano or a violin or something like that. So it did have that kind of like I don't know this like creative kind of thing about just like oh in the past like is this like what Shinra exec- executives did? Is this like, like a cool of- retreat? Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Mount, mountain retreat, yeah. Is yeah. There Mount Vernon or something? T- team, yeah. team building. <laughs> <laughs> team, yeah, exactly. you have to go to a haunted mansion for team building? <laughs> uh, well, how does it compare to your memories of Shinra Mansion and Dirt of Cerberus though, Ron? In the dirt? <laughs> <laughs> it was in the dirt. It, Shut up. I, it was not. It of was course it was. Yeah, we played in the dirt. We streamed it. Yeah. Uh, so uh, Dennis M. writes and says, The Shinra Mansion was pretty disappointing compared to the original for me. Yeah. In it, the OG, you truncated. had to find a hidden passage and go down a cool spiral staircase to yep. get to the library. Mm-hmm. And here, it's an elevator? I get that the <laughs> And fix, they didn't know. Yeah, I get that the fixed camera angle made the staircase so iconic and it's hard to replicate with a free camera, yep. but they could have done better than that. Also, the silliest thing is that Cloud says no one in the village had any idea about the basement just press first floor <laughs> yeah yes. it's not like yeah you're right maybe there was like a bookshelf covering it that Sephiroth was like let me slide this <laughs> I will say that none of the buildings in Nibelheim, Nibelheim proper have basements so maybe they just don't understand the concept mm. oh. oh there can be nothing under you know what first there's floor. no stairs in the whole <laughs> country bumpkins <Yep. laughs> Uh, They're all single level. I haven't figured out stairs yet. Okay, even if the Shinra Mansion wasn't wow, I mean, it's, it's cool to see that space. Yeah. You know, yeah. and it's like, yeah, there's just a lot to explore, hopefully. Um, but 
I definitely had the moment of just full geek out mode, like seeing the library, like seeing that, getting to run around yeah. the little library hallway. It's like, this is, this is as seven as it gets. Is this little book hallway? Yeah, this, well, this little book hallway. And then it's just like that kind of, that cut of Sephiroth just like reading. And like, you could just kind of like watch the books kind of like stack up yeah, more and more. And so it's more got good. the Dutch kind of like, tilt on it. Yeah. So representing good. his kind of like insanity. Like he's just like isolating for a week, just reading everything that he possibly can until the point where he's just like he's just convinced himself of everything down there yeah and i love that that that, that moment and the lesson is don't read children <laughs> yes i haven't i was confused when he, <laughs> he's like hey cloud check this out and he's showing the book it just got it's got like a bunch of kind of censored black marks or it's like words Redacted. Are like, yeah, yeah. And i don't know why is that just a sign of Shinra's secrecy, I guess? But I it's just imagine, weird yeah. that it's like these old tomes, but they're still like... Mm-hmm. But then so far, they're still getting a lot. Maybe you can like see through the redacted parts with the red <laughs> light. I don't know. And who are they supposed to be exactly? Is just up to our interpretation. Is it all supposed to be Hojo? Is it all supposed to be just... I- I th- Hojo and Ghast, I would imagine. Like yeah. most R&D folks, I guess. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I forgot to mention, too, I, I like when you're... Um, when you go outside of the inn, there is that militia in town, and they've got like the... Torches yeah. like to the mansion. Maybe kill should, the beast. Maybe we should bring him some food. That's exactly. What I was like, this kind of militia I can get behind. Like, he needs medicine. Yeah, quickly. Let's help <laughs> this man. Yeah, exactly. Everyone's still so nice to Sephiroth. Even yeah. that moment, it's so sweet. Um, so then Sephiroth explains that, like, yeah, Genova here. Uh, it was an ancient that they found two thousand years ago. Found her frozen with a ethereal smile. I think he says. Mm-hmm. Is he? Okay. Um, but then, I love this, they say that the Genova Project started in 1977. Okay. That's when she was verified as an ancient, is what yeah. Sephiroth says in this section, which they've never had that date on it before. And it, okay. mm. Ross, your middle name is the Star Wars guy for a reason. That has to be a Star 1977, Wars. 1977, that's the only thing that happened that year. And Kataste, <laughs> the game's original director, like he's obsessed with Star Wars. Like, it has to be a Star Wars yeah. reference. Oh, no is that like, reason. was he behind Wedge and Biggs in these I games? I don't, oh, that's a good question, because... Mm. Is six the first time with Biggs and Wedge? I think so. And he directed six, oh, so sure. I don't yeah, know wow. if it's a Saki Gucci thing. It's probably a Katasa. Oh, I didn't know thing. that. Yeah. It's fun. Um, I so it was before that. I, I don't know. Chat, help us out. Please help us. Um, so then the whole idea is the Genova Project, the goal is to resurrect ancients. Yeah. And then Seraph was like, don't you see? I am an atron. This is sweet. Um, <laughs> and then he chucks Cloud across the room when he tries <laughs> to stop him. <laughs> Which I love that he doesn't have, like, even still in his his psychotic state he still doesn't have like necessarily like ill will like he doesn't actively murder cloud mm. it's just that mm-hmm. when cloud i think like physically intervenes with him was like what are you doing and then he grabs him and then yeah and back yeah off Trump. i will say it for like how kind of um slow on the uptake cloud was in this section of the game <laughs> at times yeah like laying there in bed being like ancients whatever yeah <laughs> he he was surprisingly cool trying to deal with sephiroth here he was like hey man what's going on yeah hey, man, how about we put down the book a little <laughs> bit yeah. uh the townspeople know a couple great songs on the piano. Yes. Hey, do you want to see Diva's yeah, freaking underwear? Sandwiches? <laughs> <laughs> a lot of fun stuff. Hey, how about the stamp theme? Bow, wow, wow. Come on, join it. Bow, wow, wow. <laughs> Put the book down. No, seriously. <laughs> <laughs> what is this? A test tube? Check this out. It's crazy. Uh, Grant D writes and says the combination of Genova and Sephiroth's theme during the basement scene is so perfectly haunting. Yeah, cool. Genova's theme comes in again there, which is so sweet. I didn't notice that. Okay. Uh, Nicholas uh, Cook writes in says the way Cloud crashed into the wall after being slapped by Sephiroth was so specifically good at communicating his power. Yeah. I audibly winced when the blow connected. That's the kind of detail that higher fidelity affords, and I freaking love it. I did really like that. It's just like yeah, you you could feel kind of like the impact of just like oh my god. Yeah. Like just how powerful he is. Uh, Andrew Burns, uh, well, I mean, that's kind of it, right? Cloud wakes up and then's like, well, I gotta go see what's happening to the town. And then he walks outside and the entire thing's on fire. Oh my God. <laughs> Good God. <laughs> so is the implication that Sephiroth just went out there and he just farraga every house? <laughs> yeah. <like a> later. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it seems like he went full farraga. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> But you, gotta, you had to have two ATB bars. No to use fire for us. <laughs> well, he was for a long time. He was building up that ATB. <laughs> uh, he, might have, he might have ascended to a third bar by that point. <laughs> <laughs> <It explodes! laughs> we may or may not know in this game. Who knows? Yeah. I, I was like, in in Ever Crisis, in a yay, right? <laughs> this is the last time I'll bring up Ever Crisis. I swear. Um, maybe. It won't be. It won't be. <laughs> but, 
And, and I'm not even How do you remember people. so much about Ever Crisis? Because I went back and I, what I did is we did that Max Spoilers where we yep. talked about the yep. first four chapters of First Soldier. Oh, I remember. Which is <laughs> Sephiroth's first mission. Oh, of course. But they've released, according to the YouTube channel that I used to watch these, because I'm not actually playing it. I don't want to deal with that for sure. play nonsense but there's YouTube uploads where you can watch the story which I think is fun mm. and so they had one more story chapter and in that one uh, it's Sephiroth going on a mission more and he does have a moment where there's like a big tree blocking their path he's like no problem I got it guys boosh and he just blasts it with Farag and it's just like douche and it just like blows it out and it's like it's fun uh, to see like, oh this is how this he is probably, did yeah, okay, this is what it. he did to the town yeah know? Um, and the town's on fire. Yes. And everyone's dying. The whole, whole town is on fire. We can't emphasize enough. Yeah. There's never been more fire in a, a town. A lot of Faragas yes. over a short period of time. There are some Everything. people where they're like, ah, my shirt's on Faraga. <laughs> <laughs> I like how much time they spent watching the photographer like stumble out and collapse. Right, oh, right. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he had that moment where he took a picture of himself. Ah, cool. For posterity. <laughs> I invented the selfies. Is this, am, am I going to... Photograph myself dying? <laughs> <laughs> the ultimate dream of any photographer. What's a Nikon? Poor guy. <laughs> what is this, a Nikon? <laughs> Andrew Burns writes in, slowly crawling around the burning village helplessly while Sephiroth towers over you, casually skewering people, has to be the most menacing and intimidating he has ever been. It's yeah. an awesome, awesome juxtaposition to his almost affable personality in the run-up to the reactor. Yeah. It is... The best. Um, let's see. Paul Swears, Swires, I'm sorry, yeah. writes in and says, shut up, Ronnie, for a second. Okay. I absolutely <laughs> love the end of the flashback sequence. Sephiroth went full slasher movie villain, and it was awesome. He felt yeah. as scary to me here as he did in 1997. Great. No, yeah, that, that, that's good. I, I just, oh, man. What's wrong? <laughs> it's, <laughs> this is something that just, like, <laughs> this kind of bugged me a little bit. The, it, the mayor death. Because we haven't talked about the mayor yet. <laughs> With the mayor. With the throat slit? It, no, not only that. He was it. So it was him and like three other guys. Mm -hmm. They all had guns. Yeah. <laughs> Sephiroth. That's where I thought you were going to go. Sephiroth. Not one the, of them pulled the trigger. Not yeah. one of them. The, he, Sephiroth didn't kill them all at the same time. He killed one by one. None of them, none of them bothered to take a shot. Even <laughs> after... Three have been killed, <laughs> and yeah. the mayor's sitting there with a gun, and he's looking at Sephiroth like, what are you going to do? Sephiroth decapitates him. Not one shot. Here's, what about this? What about this? Hot shot. I'm what? not saying that that's, I'm, I'm not, look, I'm just saying, you could have just. You're calling the mayor a coward? He's thinking if I don't pull the trigger, maybe I can still get that dinner out of him. <laughs> <laughs> but then talk, you know, but he's, he's standing there, he's sitting there being like, I don't know. Okay. <laughs> this is Nojima. Uh, write in patreon.com slash manuals with two hands. Let us know. Yeah. Because wouldn't it be cool? I'm not saying this is what they're going for, but wouldn't it be interesting if like all those guns, they just had no ammo because the town was okay. so But poor. then you would have like, no, no, no. Because like, they know like they that. have no ammo. They know it's like props. They're trying to scare them with it, but they know they, they have, this is why they needed Shinra to come in and help because they have no defensive capabilities. They're <laughs> able to like afford. Every one of their guns doesn't yeah. have any ammo. Actually, a lot of the guns, they had orange tips on the top. I don't know if you saw that. <laughs> I did notice that. <laughs> you think this cowboy town would have a few lassoes at least? Oh, <laughs> yeah, just, ride by the choker belt. Yep. Yeah, yeah, tangle them up in orthopedic yeah. underwear. Yeah. <laughs> I can't see. But I, yeah. <laughs> okay, what about this though? That, it mean, just, it just because there was so much. And here's the thing: is there was just so much time spent on watching those guys because that was yeah. the only thing. Like, as you're crawling slowly, <laughs> you're watching a minute of these guys just not taking a shot at somebody that is clearly hostile, and you kind of think to yourself like. Just do something. Like, please try to defend yourself. None of them. None of them try to defend this? themselves. What about this? Let me None defend. of them try to run away. Hey, like, <laughs> let me defend this. What about this? I mean, yeah. Cloud is out for a while. The entire town is on fire. Yep. Everyone's dead. The okay. kids singing the stamp theme is burning in hell. Yep. Mm -hmm. I mean, maybe they've unloaded all their ammo already on Sephiroth, but it's pretty clear. Just, do you not think he could deflect a bullet if they shot him? Of course no, he could I, just pull thing, like, it. I'm like, not saying that would see. work. I'm saying try. Yeah, sure. Well. So try. <laughs> <laughs> the part that stuck with me is that for a guy who's a doofus, the camera really lingered on his cowboy hat fluttering down <laughs> to the ground. Like we're like, oh, 
I voted for him. <laughs> Slow, slowly <laughs> catching flame. Because of the head. <laughs> it's the ground. Uh, yeah. Hunter Blessing says, I didn't fully feel the evil within Sephiroth until the moment he stepped on the mayor's cowboy hat. Yes. Right? Yes. I, I wanted him to put it on. That extra <laughs> touch of needless and so much cheesy evil were merely cemented his villain. Take the little badge off him, too. <laughs> I'll be <laughs> <laughs> top buckaroo now vote for me for a second term <laughs> you gonna vote let's just say this economy is on fire <laughs> I said let's just say uh, Adam uh, Roberts says I love the musical and visual reimagination <laughs> run for mayor after that. <laughs> hey are you still alive you voting no days you got a couple more hours for the poll <laughs> Uh, uh, so Adam Roberts says, I love the musical and visual reimagination of my childhood <laughs> memories, but Cloud's <laughs> movement speed when he's staggering into the burning village was such a buzzkill. Uh, yeah. yep. Movement impairment for story reasons makes sense, but the animation was so repetitive and slow that when the wood collapsed between Cloud and his mom's house, I audibly groaned as I had to backtrack and do a different route. Moments yeah. like this, yep. and like sliding along the wall, yep. or the L2, R2 crawl slash valve turn. Don't start on the valve with the rust. It feels <laughs> overwrought to me, and I think it kills the pace. Yeah. It does. This, yeah. this I, is a yellow ledge crumbling again is when the, yeah. the wood falls in front of you. It's, it's, it's rough. Totally. Yep. That, that is also kind of like, I don't know, there's something really kind of like sad and devastating about just like Cloud wanting like his mom to be alive. And like you are looking at that door that like, that door is embers at right. this point in time. It is, it is. 2,000 degrees in there. There's no way that they call she's it alive. Mr. Fahrenheit. Yeah. <laughs> and they did. God damn. Anyways. <laughs> Sorry. Go on with your point. Go on with your point. No, it's just kind of like devastating. Like, because you can look at that, that door and be like, he, she's obviously dead, but like he still has hope. I mean, right. This is still him narrating things, too. True. Yeah. True. And then I crawled and it was really slow and painful, you guys. It really sucked. <laughs> so what should they do as designers in this situation? They want you to feel the situation. If you're sprinting through at normal cloud pace, it would also feel like this is weird. Do we want the crawl but just mm -mm. sped up fifty percent? Yes. Yes, exactly. that's it. I think yep. that just I, I think it is yeah. the speed at which Yeah. Um uh, maybe. I don't I don't know what they could like augment it with. Maybe help somebody out of some rubble or something if you want to if you want to put it's, some like weight yeah. to it, but yeah, making a stumble around and and crawl like a, so hold triangle that's to a good help point. people. I mean, that, yeah, that's a good point. Like Cloud is still just like trying to help people. He's not really though at all. But no, in this that's like, the way yeah. he's the, doing it, he's yeah. not helping anybody. Yeah. If you want, yeah, if you want to make it feel weighty, like uh, show us that he's yeah. still like trying. Yeah, yeah. Instead of just yeah stumbling about. Uh, Chris Davies says my main takeaway from this section is how effing brutal it is to see Sephiroth going straight up postal. Timely reference. Hearing the mother screaming, my son's in there, and being told he's gone. Absolutely floored me. Yeah. And then crawling yeah. painfully slowly towards Sephiroth while he just murders people right in front of you and the music swells. Holy crap. Yeah. Kudos to Tyler Hoechlin too. Some strong voice work. I love the way he delivers the line, <clears throat> I must be going. Mother's waiting. <laughs> yes. I do. I, that my favorite thing in that scene when Cloud's like, what? What's up, bro? What are you doing? <laughs> I love how Sephiroth doesn't even look at him. Doesn't even make eye contact with Cloud. He just walks right past him. It's right. such a cool yeah. little detail. Like I, he's he's thinking such bigger thoughts at this point that his best buddy from an hour ago is right. Nothing. And also that he's choosing still. He has the cognizance to know I'm not killing this guy. Right. And there's something very diabolical in that. Do you think? Yeah, I do. I mean, like he's watching this. Like this is his hometown. He knows this is his hometown, and he's going to let Cloud live. Hmm. Yeah. The uh, the second time I played this, I just I just let it chill on the crawling scene for a little bit, uh, just to listen to that this rendition of the song here too. Just that mm. it's like that driving driving bass beat just sounded so cool. I'm gonna have to go back and listen to that. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's great. Uh, Villas writes in and says, "I have a strange opinion. Despite all the leaps forward, I don't think the Sephiroth turning and walking into the flames of Nibelheim has ever actually been improved from the original seven. The music and sound effects around the scene, yes, absolutely, but not the actual scene. For example, in this case, it's almost too real. It loses some of that ethereal nightmare of the black void and the I flame agree. where you see I the agree. village around it. Yes, Maybe that's totally. Just and I, I think that that perfectly captures it. It's like that nothing but blackness in the background, like, but flames freaking everywhere. Like, I, I love that. It does feel a little bit like nightmarish. Here, it's as it's more realized it does lose a little bit of that like mysticism to his like nefariousness in a way right right yep um biz Kiet writes in and says as someone who never played the original 
Am I still am I still supposed to be confused as to how and why Sephiroth has a wing and snake eyes? <laughs> like I see how he was born as an experiment or whatever, but I'm still confused. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up! <laughs> Shut up! <laughs> Uh, look, there's this not- is the point where we just don't get pissed. <laughs> the valve rules. <laughs> Sephiroth's eyes rule. Feathers fall down when he's coming into a scene because it's cool like John Woo would do. Hold on. John Woo would do. It's what John Woo would do. <laughs> That's a good point. This is before John Woo really hit it in the U.S., right? Or, I mean, I guess Face Off came out before this, maybe? I think like I think we knew John Woo. Right? Did we? Okay. Face Off 96? It feels like a 96 yeah, year. You're probably right. Face Off year. Every year? Ooh, wait a minute, guys. Oh, wait a minute. Oh. <laughs> 1997 <laughs> for Face Off. Uh-oh. Hang on. The same day that Final Fantasy VII released? <laughs> no, nah, it's got to be summer 97. I remember okay. seeing it. <laughs> I re- please, come on. <laughs> um, no, look. It, the, <laughs> if I put a gun to Ronnie and said, why does Sephiroth have one wing? Because he's the one wing now. Because <laughs> his song says so, dude. Yeah. I mean, it might make a little more sense later, but don't expect a Hold lot. On. Is this game dumb? Yeah, it's more. <laughs> <it's- laughs> uh, speaking uh, of, like going back to that, the, like the scene where he is just about to take Genova off of the. Uh, so, here's, the here's the thing. Yeah, because we haven't like, passed that. <laughs> no, here's my point. Here's my point. Uh, the demo ends him walking in the flames. Right there. We're going to talk through all of Cloud's past, which is like another 15 minutes. It's really Mass. not a lot. Oh, yeah. right, right, right. right? Okay, but yeah, if you no, have only the demo and you want to stop, this is your stopping point. But we're going to talk about the rest of Cloud's past, which is just a snippet, I swear. We're not going to get into stuff in calm. Um, so anyways, right. Ronnie, what happens after that? <laughs> There's two wings. <laughs> <laughs> and he says, boy, do I love these wings. One snake eye, two wings. <laughs> two wings. Hang on, what if I swap these? <laughs> and so you watch him kind of swap. <laughs> Scales drop slowly. <laughs> uh, no, I mean, like, so he, uh, Sephiroth obviously, like, goes back up to the Maka reactor to uh, reunite, to uh, take Genova with him. Um, off to the faraway land. But, like, as he's doing that, Cloud goes and pursues... Which, by the way, we should point out, is it basically like, hey, Genova's an ancient, I'm an ancient, Yep. Uh, therefore, yep. this world's ours, let's go conquer the world together. Yeah, it's, 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 it's mine by right. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He, kept, he keeps saying it's mine by right. Do you think yep. he had to vacuum up more Mako on his way back up there? <laughs> <laughs> I think he, had, he was having a... He was having... He was in this mental space and he had to turn it on. <laughs> Which Cloud 70%. Here for this again. It's pretty dangerous. If we're <laughs> I'm coming, mommy. Uh, it, uh, oddly enough, like, this scene is the amount of time it took in the, the first game. <laughs> to do all of it? Yeah, to get back up there. It's just like... <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, yeah oh, yeah, right, yeah, right, right. Yeah. yeah, pretty breezy. But you get to see then Tifa in the best... The best thing in Chapter 1, obviously... Uh, is it's Tifa cool. snapping, where she's like, I'm sick of this, I'm sick of Shinra, I'm sick of everything I'm dealing with here, I'm literally going to pick up Sephiroth's sword and just charge up the stairs and try and kill this guy as he's fondling his statue of his mom, <laughs> <laughs> or whatever the hell's going on there with Genova. Before the fondles. I put a pin in that, because I have a question about that. Please, yeah, no excellent. pin. What is the weird metal statue in front of the tank? Wish we I were knew. just talking about that. <laughs> okay. I wish I knew. Uh, it's... It's a reminder of what's inside the tank. But okay. it has like the gas liquid crap that falls out of it. And so it's like, it seems like it, it has like a practical blood. purpose. Yes. And he like grabs it, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it has like the cool, you know, classic Hitchcock shot of like him reaching up to it as the camera yes. zooming in. Zooming out, like, and you notice the, like the huh. pipes coming down make wings. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep. It. It's, so it's cool. got a very, very angel, of course. Yeah. Um, that's a very good point. Yeah, I don't know. It certainly looks awesome. Yeah. It's just like a weird way of marking. I, I don't know. It seems like such a specific thing that I was like, there's got to be. We got to get that story Bible. Give us the story Bible. <laughs> I do remember, and this is dorky, um, interviewing uh, Katase, the game's director, and he said that he was talking about like how fast and loose things were for developing the original Final Fantasy 7 hmm. and he said like that cutscene the iconic cutscene of Sephiroth being like uh, Genova yeah. come to me he's like yeah I, he's like I just I just storyboarded that myself real quick hmm. like just do this and then just gave it to people and then wow. it was done and like he also <laughs> he, like the <laughs> game's director he hand animated 
so much of the game and like the whole opening scene with Cloud jumping off the train like that was all hand animated by him like, it's just wow. cool to see like that wow. era of game development where the directors <laughs> jumped in for animations um but hang so, on, yeah. with, with Tifa, yeah. she says in this, because uh, I know that you guys just finished the um, Cloud's Past yeah. in the original version, and I remember the line being that, like, I'm sick of this, I'm sick of all this. I remember it being, I hate them all. She said, crush them, smash them. <laughs> And she said, for Brian. <laughs> for Brian! <laughs> she's charging up the stairs. <laughs> Didn't she say, I, mean, I probably, hate them all? Probably, yeah. yeah, yeah. That's such, that uh, to right. me, I think that's such a better line than like, I'm sick of this. I'm sick of all of this. <laughs> I'm sick of you burning my town. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This has happened a lot. Cut it out. <laughs> Straight up sucks, man. Yeah. So she runs up at him, and he ends up just easily... Slashing well, I love it because he right grabs down. the sword, yeah. uh, right, and then yeah. like lifts it, which he didn't do in the original exactly that way, but like lifts it with her like holding it, um, and then, so he then does the cool slash to her gut. She's flying back. The blood in Rebirth looks awesome. It's like yeah. Boosh, like yeah. splashing yeah. out. Yeah. My question is, well, there's a lot to get to in this, and we can talk about it in the next episode, I suppose. But like, why didn't Sephiroth kill her? I don't think he cared. Like because if you think about it. There was this. There was a slash. She fell. I would imagine for him, like this is so in, like she is so insignificant in his plan at this point in time to walk down the stairs and be like dead doesn't make <laughs> any sense. Like she just yeah. has like there's no threat here whatsoever. Well, there's no threat from the she's town's people. She's in the way for a brief second. He didn't want to look like he was trying too hard in front of his mom. <laughs> <laughs> But also, <laughs> her cowboy hat flutters to the ground. The second cowboy hat we've seen do that in the last oh five my minutes. God. The By of, the way, end yeah, of an era. if I dropped a cowboy hat, it would just fall down. I don't want to ruin anybody. Anybody's a picture. Not if you here. died. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> it would flutter. <laughs> if they close my eyelids. <laughs> Whoever murdered you would stomp on it. <laughs> that, that's probably correct. My read on it was just that idea of like, oh, maybe he kind of liked Tifa because she was like, they were like, they were getting along. Like, yeah, I, I would they were imagine, flirty, but just, like, they were like buddies on the mountain not that long ago. And so for yeah. her not so to he's die like, I'm only going to grievously injure her. And yeah, I'm going to mess up your gut something fierce. Yeah. yeah. And that's and maybe he does kill her. Who can say? So, uh, so everybody else in town that he meets, he is freaking hates. <laughs> just <laughs> decapitates. Well, I mean, it Take is a, a picture of me, will you? <laughs> so, <laughs> posterity. Yeah. Why, I mean, I guess we didn't talk about Why does he burn the town? So he just wants to get back up and get Genova and get the hell out of there. But he just leaves the mansion. And he's like, I hate this. Like, what? what is it that makes him burn the town? Well, he thinks... There's something about I know in in the original in F7 he talks about Cloud being a traitor. Do you remember like doesn't he call him a traitor? He's like, "Oh, mm, the traitor." I don't and maybe. He, yes. Yeah, like he and it's something about like like you guys have taken like our land away. Something like that. Cuz so, he like, feels he, like he has a right to the planet. Well, yeah, so, exactly. And, like it's, and so it's part of that just overall like we own this thing and so yeah. you like, are it's toys his to anyways. Me, and so yeah. yes. And like this was the first I to me opportunity for him to just be like, "Oh, this is mine. I can do with it what I please." Yep. So he burns the he burns it all down. Again, why does he leave like Cloud and Tifa? I would also imagine that there's still an amount of like I don't necessarily have ill will, but don't get in my way. I I think it's just you know, the, uh, demanded by the plot that they live, basically. Uh, but why is he killed Brian that's then? <laughs> <laughs> that's that's game. Why great he question, Brian? <laughs> but yeah, just in general, why he burns a town? I think it just is like he's lost touch with his humanity. You know, he doesn't yeah. see himself as human anymore, and therefore right. they mean nothing to him. And, and, and he, he can say, do as he pleases. And as yeah. he says, they were mine by right. So yeah. it's just yeah. the idea of yeah. So he can do what he wants. Okay, so that idea of this is the ancients' planet. Mm -hmm. And humans are, they're not. They're a disease. Yes, type Correct. of thing. Okay, yep. got it. Got it. Well, that makes perfect sense, and I love it. Um, <laughs> we got some more questions from Patreon. Okay, we go. Let's do it. By the way, we'll cover the rest in episode uh, two of the Deepest Dive coming up next week. But then we go back to calm, and everyone says, "Cool story, bro." <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, it's, yeah, not, no it's not just that Tifa gets stabbed. Or slashed. And Cloud oh, then course. shows up. Of course! This is the biggest thing. Yes. yes. <laughs> Before we get to the end of it, Cloud shows yeah, yeah. up. And then he basically goes after Sephiroth too. 
and then it just sh- 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 flashes yeah, back and forth. Yeah, but that's, you know, yeah. <laughs> no, but then yeah, it flashes back and forth. He wasn't no, wearing a like, cowboy hat, so why do you care? Yeah. <laughs> and then it's the idea of like, and then you fought Sephiroth, and he's like, yeah. I don't really know. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> and end yeah, of chapter yeah, yeah. one. <laughs> for the way we're talking about it. Yeah. Uh, Josh C says, I never played the original Final Fantasy VII beyond a PS1 demo disc with the opening bombing mi- bombing mission. <laughs> yeah. I'm experiencing the whole story for the first time and joining my first deepest dive in one long shot with remake plus rebirth on PS5. Wow, nice. that's incredible. That's yeah. yeah. And Josh, he's new to Patreon. Yeah. He's new to submitting comments, but he knows how to do it. Are you mm-hmm. ready for this? Yeah. yeah. In rebirth. Cloud is twice as fast at breaking boxes while exploring. I tested this, and he has around 120 recovery frames after swinging his weapon in Remake, versus only 60 (laughs) in Rebirth. The iframes from those boxes, no. Uh, Cloud used to take an extra step with his left foot to sheathe his weapon, but now he'll just sheathe while running. Basically, Cloud can smash boxes a full second faster in Rebirth than he could in Remake. There it is. There it is. That was very good. This is the literalization of leveling up. (laughs) (laughs) Can we get that in BPM for next episode? I want boxes per minute, please. Uh, Beto Q92. Uh, Remember Beto O'Rourke? Yeah, sure of do. course I do. Maybe I'm remembering wrong, but <laughs> I remember Beto O'Rourke. <laughs> <laughs> but was remember? Didn't he like play with like? Come on. Yeah. No, he going. played with. Help me out. Sure. He played with like at the drive-in. That Beto O'Rourke guy. He's like he's like a bassist for like at the drive-in's first band or whatever. Did he skateboard oh, on the stage? Mars Volta. <laughs> I think so. And the oh, po- he could have been Mars Volta. <laughs> well, who are the Mars Volta boys? Beto O'Rourke. <laughs> <laughs> and Brian. <laughs> and Brian. Okay, Beto keep Maybe I'm remembering wrong, but was Traversal and Remake this finicky slash janky? It kept mantling over random objects when exploring, no. and when it'd go up and down no. or ladder, Sephiroth, Tifa, and Shira guards would float towards Cloud. I'm really sorry for this game, but I couldn't help but being taken out of what was happening in the demo. Well, if you think about, like, going from Midgar, right, to a natural landscape, I would imagine, like, like there's, I, I would imagine there's something there, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, Midgar, yeah. you're just, you know, you're flat surfaces jungle. and staircases. Exactly, yeah. 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 And now we're, we're traversing mountains. Um, so, like, as a result, yep, we're traversing a little bit more with, with Circle. It does feel a little bit jankier, yep. It's... It's janky terrain. Yep. It's tough to navigate. Yep. Yeah. It didn't, it didn't um, bother me so much. Though. I mean, no, I, no, yeah. It didn't, yeah. Gavin writes in. Fitzgerald, that is. Gavin. 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 He says, a portion of the upfront environment textures, the lighting, the Vaseline anti-aliasing and performance mode, uh, they distracted me during the end of the Nibelheim, sorry, Nibelheim section. The flames didn't look great. The mayor and his goons confronting Sephiroth just standing around. It all felt a bit cheap. I'm a bit surprised. I guess I yeah. wish they had narrowed the scope to make it a bit more of an even experience. I'm tempted to wait for a PC version or see what patching they do in the next few months. Mm. I hear you. There's definitely, even in fidelity mode, there's a lot of like pictures in the background. Seems like the main culprit of just like a blurry mass of pixels, you know? Oh, sure, yeah. I, th- I think we've been spoiled. What do you mean? Uh, Explain. <laughs> I mean everything t- to me on the surface level the I fact that we're having this conversation right now tells yeah. me yes I, yeah I hear you yeah. uh, on, on a surface level I think th- I think the game looks I think the game looks quite great. phenomenal I, like, yeah. I have no complaints about how the I game think it looks good looks. it looks nominally better than remake on PS4 to be fair I think that game looks awesome and it's yeah real, I mean you know the, like we were just talking that it's it's Midgar versus like it's going to be a ton of different landscapes right versus like yes. dark huge dark and concrete yeah like yeah, yeah. That said, it, I mean, even just seeing like pictures in the background that are still all blurred out and pixelated, it's like, all right, well, I look forward to the remaster on PS6 where they can make all this stuff mm. run at 60 and look in the background. Uh, and, I, I don't even notice them. Really? Well, no. It's just the art style popular in this world. <laughs> <laughs> Nibelheim, so yeah. very, very new impressionism. <laughs> yeah. um, okay, this one has a backstory. So I was streaming this game, and Jolly Goodnow said something in the chat, and I said, Jolly Goodnow, that's so good. Please jump over to patreon.com slash minmax with two hands and submit that for the deepest dive. Okay. And they did not. <laughs> but, but, but what Hayden, a commanding presence you have. But Hayden Berthelot <laughs> noticed that they did not and, and, oh. and did it for them. Oh. And the quote was, Cloud's past was water, right? <laughs> 
Say that again. <laughs> so Jolly Good now, as quoted by Hayden Berthelot, says, Clouds passed was water, right? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where we go from there. <laughs> Hey, I got one. <laughs> Taylor C. writes in on Patreon. They say, no, hang on, hang on, wait. <laughs> I'm that, not that, done that, with that, that does bring me to one thing that we could, like, kind of skipped over, and I, I do want to talk a little bit about this. Uh, Nibelheim. <laughs> Mount Nebel. There is a point where you're walking up, and you see a big, huge body of water. Really? Yeah. They call it an ocean. <laughs> they call it an ocean. But <laughs> True. <laughs> <laughs> Nibelheim is not on an ocean. What water is it? Really? So, like, overlooking oh, yeah. a cliff? It's a tall mountain. Oh, yeah, maybe. But to the no, northwest. It looks like it's, like, right there. Yeah, I know yeah. what you're talking yeah. about. Yeah. Like you can yeah. climb down and get a little materia thing. Yes, exactly. Exactly. So, so is that cloud just being like, and then there was a big freaking ocean there, you guys? <laughs> and people are like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't been there. <laughs> Sounds cool. Tifa's. <laughs> <laughs> sitting on her hands over there. <laughs> oh, I don't know if I should say something. Eric, yeah. do you want to go get something to eat? Uh, Taylor C. writes in and says, Soldiers must be terrible at stealth because their armor makes noise every single time they move. 10 out of 10 sound design. It is very clank, 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 yeah. clank. Yeah. Um, yeah. Do you guys care about that idea of like enemies technically having stealth detectors? Like you're like triggering them in the world now instead of remake? It, I, I don't have strong feelings either way on it. No. Nope. So you want to spend another three hours on it, or? <laughs> that was it. Yeah, we can do three hours. All right, the Buster Sword is not designed for stealth. Mm. That's true. Troy writes in, I need you guys to help me decide if Troy Boy is a good boy or a bad boy. Okay. okay. Troy writes in and says, I'm not going to start until Rebirth is released, but I wanted to share a fun thing. <laughs> <laughs> but I wanted to share a fun <laughs> thing I'm doing to prepare. Okay. My girlfriend is excited to watch me play Rebirth, but has never experienced Final Fantasy VII. So I'm making a PowerPoint presentation to go through the plot of Final Fantasy VII Remake to get her up to speed. I have a full slide dedicated to the cat. <laughs> if if you can do this and and your girlfriend genuinely entertains you doing this process, yeah. marry this woman. <laughs> if she is like Aerith in the crowd, yeah, yes, during exactly. Cloud at the Honeybee Inn, yeah, but he's like, not oh, doing hey, well. Hey, she's like, ah, 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 ah. Yeah. Yeah. Is your girlfriend an older woman who will tell you that you're being a silly? <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. He's your soulmate. Marry that goose. <laughs> and I hope Marry you're watching this together. Goose. Uh, Jumpo writes in and says, this isn't directly about the demo, but I noticed on IMDb that Sephiroth's voice actor was a prominent character in a sitcom called Seventh Heaven, which is a funny coincidence. <laughs> wow. So is there footage of, of Sephiroth <laughs> in his voice being like, Seventh Heaven. <laughs> <laughs> song or how does the theme song the Seventh Heaven go? No, that's how it goes. Yeah, I think you got it. Seventh Heaven. <laughs> sitcom intro, do you think? Hang on, okay, classic TV theme. Oh, Cloud. <laughs> Look this reminds me of the time. <laughs> the fact that you had, that you know, it was like, what is it like? Seven, seven. And you got that right on is a if little terrifying. Just, if you put a gun in my head, I don't think I tell, could tell you one thing else about that show. But somehow <laughs> yeah, I knew the tone was. <laughs> seven, <laughs> that just that has is. me wondering what if they had cast Matthew Fox as Sephiroth instead. Oh, can you imagine? Now there's. Or Lance Bass, at least. Can you imagine <laughs> such a wacky world? Craig Peck, remember he was Sephiroth in Kingdom Hearts? Yeah, he wasn't in Seventh Heaven, though, was he? No, he wasn't. Okay. I'm just I'm stretching. Seventh <laughs> And we all know the rest of the lyrics. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Craig Peck writes in, look, some people are new to Seven. Yeah. And so you got to honor. Because totally. we don't want to be yes. gatekeepers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. So Greg this Peck. Is, look at the story. Greg Thank Peck God. says, are we supposed to accept that Cloud's hair is completely natural and isn't the result of an ungodly amount of hair product? <laughs> Get him out! <laughs> that's yes. Mako for you. <laughs> Yeah, this Mako we put it through his hair. <laughs> Sephiroth's like, no, buddy, stop it. Knock it off. It's a lot of poisoning. Yeah. I also like the guy who has brought up Ever Crisis ten times being like, we can't be gatekeepers. Anymore. <laughs> uh, is it Mako Net? Is that his hair product? Oh, <laughs> perfect. There was a comment. I'm sorry I missed it, but um, somebody asked, like, was there anything from the original other than orthopedic underwear you were missing <laughs> in Rebirth? For this section, and the only thing I can think of is like playing through it again with you, Grant. There's such a good moment of an animation 
where Cloud's like, what's materia? <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Snoof scoops. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, yeah um, the only voice that, place that was voiced. Yeah. <laughs> um. <laughs> but, but in that moment then, like, Tifa has a really good animation where she's like, Dunk, and she bangs her head on the mountain, and then like her arms like dangle, like she's just so frustrated with Cloud being so stupid. Really, it's a really oh, fun animation, man, man, and like so Tifa being annoyed by how stupid Cloud is, I feel like doesn't really come through mm. in this section. Uh, no, not, not at all. I think I think for me, it's the two frames. Uh, they make up Sephiroth laughing with just his shoulders just jumping. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then he does the like back. <laughs> yeah, and then he does the. Does right? he ever like audibly? L- he must no. chuckle in this. Yeah, I think he does. But I think, when he, I think when he catches himself like talking about his past, I think he chuckles a little bit on just like, why am I talking about this? But he just goes like, Huff. he doesn't go. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it sounds like. Sorry, anybody else have any thoughts on stuff we're missing? Um, no, I mean like, it's it's crazy good. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's <not> really <laughs> it's really difficult. I, I mean I, I do think that we which we've already talked about is like Shinra's mansion yeah. could have looked a little bit differently, but other than that, lazy I don't does, know how much. Lazy does. Uh, Manic T writes in they say the subtitle oh boy of remake from the last game ended up being a literal plot plot device because yep. Sephiroth seemingly attempted to remake the events of the first game, or at least Midgar. I'll be curious what rebirth means for the theme of this game. <laughs> Blew my mind. <laughs> we talked about this four years ago. How did you forget? Uh, uh, I remember what, four days ago. Do you think? <laughs> no joke. Do you predict that the word rebirth will mean stuff? Yes. Yeah. 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 I mean that. It would be weird if it didn't at this point, right? Yeah. Okay. I suppose. Moving on. Yo. <laughs> okay. uh, po- Pokal says, um, I've yet to deeply dive into the game, but I'm super stoked to uh, having only played Remake over the holiday break while listening to the most thorough discussion on the internet. Mm. Oh, the deepest dive on Final Fantasy VII. <laughs> Seeing, Midnight's with two ends? Oh, goddamn. <laughs> Seeing reviews quote the game has, this is Rebirth, has over 90 hours of content and the weekly recording dates for this deepest dive. My question is, does Ben secretly hate the rest of this panel? I am considering uh, using some vacation time. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, boy. Oh, boy. That's commitment. Um, The answer is uh, no, but... Prove it. Yeah. (laughs) We got a game to get through, folks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, So for the next episode of The Deepest Dive, we are covering everything in the game up through Chapter 4. Yeah. There is technically a cutscene that brings you into Chapter 5. So that's technically the stopping point, but consider it all of chapters one through four. Everything we didn't cover in this episode in chapter one, right. what we're talking about next week, and then everything through chapter four. Here's our warning. Um, I think there's a lot of game in this game. I think the next four chapters are going to be a lot of game. I understand that. I accept that um, for reasons that we can get into next week. Um, we can talk about why we're, we're cruising through this blast, USA. But yeah. um, I want to emphasize... You don't need to get to the stopping point to submit a comment on Patreon. You can start this. You can talk about things we missed in Chapter 1. You can talk about the opening hours of Chapter 2. Whatever you want to comment on, it's fair game. You can submit that comment and then catch up with the rest of the Deepest Dive whenever you want. So that is going to be the schedule for the Deepest Dive here. So we're collecting your comments, patreon.com slash minmax with two N's. Type in that link. There's links below in the description if you want to help support uh, this game getting the discussion that hopefully you think it deserves um, and how we're going well beyond spoiler casts out there. Um, this type of content is rare for a reason because it's stupid to do because it, it's so time intensive. <laughs> and so if you enjoy this level of uh, conversation, this level of depth uh, for a discussion here on Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, you can go to Patreon, jump in at even the $2 tier, submit comments on chapters one through four for next week, jump in at the $5 tier to unlock the podcast version of all of the deepest dives. And again, if you jump in through March 1st, we will send you a message via Patreon for uh, Sea of Stars on Steam. A wonderful game, thanks to Sabotage Studio, developers of The Messenger, if you know that. But again, we only have 50 Steam codes to give away for Sea of Stars. So if you check that Patreon number on our main Patreon page, it needs to be less than 5,107. If it's not, we will not be sending you a CS Stars code. That is the cutoff. I'm sorry, but we only have 50 codes. So check that if you want to be super sure. But if you just want to help support this discussion in general, your $2. Um, we've done the math. We talked about it on the MinMax show. You watching on YouTube, 
versus you jumping in for one month at the two dollar tier on Patreon. Two dollars for one month on Patreon is literally forty thousand times more helpful than the money we get from you watching this on YouTube. Uh, mm. So just for one wow. month, we'd appreciate it. Um, so next week on Sunday, March fourth, we'll be collecting your comments on chapters one through four. And then we're going to keep flying. Now, here's the thing. We're going to take a break in the middle of March uh, for GDC. So that'll be a chance for everybody to catch up if you're going to be frustrated by how fast we're going because there's a lot in this game. Yep. And it's tough to find that right, right balance because a lot of people are going to want to be cruising through all this. A lot of people are going to be saying, slow down, you idiots. Yep. We're trying to hit the middle ground and trying to accommodate all like of our schedules. going as fast as we possibly can. Well, <laughs> we'll get into it later while we're trying to fly here. Uh, but that is it, folks. That's... That's chapter one of Final <laughs> Fantasy VII. That's right. it's it's chapter one, everybody. <laughs> yeah! I love it. Ronnie, you seem skeptical going into this. Like, I don't know if we're going to have that much to say about chapter one. It, that is true. That is true. But I mean, like, it, it doesn't take long until it's just like, oh, okay. Yeah, we're all passionate about this. Like, we can <laughs> we can talk about this for four hours. Like, yeah. and, and we just said, and we will continue to do this. So, uh, yeah, I think that this is like... I also am very excited for the conversations to come because I yes. think like this will only they're setting this up for something I would imagine quite big. So <laughs> yes, it's gonna be fun. Ross, how are you feeling? Feeling great. Open to suggestions on how we should coordinate our wardrobe next week. <laughs> <laughs> what if we just didn't go to our wardrobe? We just all wear the exact same thing. Again. <laughs> yeah. Let's let's go in blind. What do you get? See what happens. Yeah, it's gonna be red flannels. For sure. <laughs> <laughs> don't don't do tip you our don't, hands. Don't okay. no, right, right. Yeah, it's gonna be. I have, I have variety, sir. Four mesh shirts. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> <unprecedented>. All mesh. Nothing <laughs> <laughs> but mesh pants. <laughs> All right, thank you so much again to everybody who submitted comments over there on Patreon for the deepest dive on Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. I know a lot of you have been waiting uh, years for this, which is unbelievably flattering. Genuinely, in my heart of hearts, I'm not able to cognitively comprehend the number of people who have like said that they've listened to the deepest dive on remake yeah. like 10 times like, that, genuinely yeah. people have like oh i watched that like four times since 2020 it yeah. blows my mind and so yeah. i i hope we don't let you down uh for the deepest dive on rebirth but we're looking forward to this full discussion and that was the demo everybody yeah we did it <laughs> all right anybody have final thoughts I just think, I think it's going to be that that second second Shinra soldier is going to be Roche. I just <laughs> don't. That feels too neat. It that's too Disney Plus, if I may. That's too much. Like let's slice every piece of this pie off and try and make content out of it. I think it's more interesting if this dude just died a miserable death because Sephiroth wasn't quite good enough as a hero. I think that's so much more interesting. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think you don't understand storytelling 101. What, what if you really just found him off camera and, and set him on his origin story? Yep. Mm. And he comes back and says, oh, he didn't make it. Dirge of the second anonymous soldier. <laughs> <laughs> now that's a game, baby. All right. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. We'll be back next week, and we'll be collecting your comments on Patreon on Sunday uh, for chapters one through four. Thanks so much, everybody. Bye. 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 Let's go. Yeah. Can't. Roche chant yet. We haven't seen him. No, it's too, it's right. too early. It's yeah. too early. Too early. We too can early. Brian chant though. <laughs> <laughs> He's not worth it. <laughs> Did you know that you can more than double the amount of podcasts from MinMax every single week by supporting us at the $5 tier on Patreon? You don't have to listen through the browser or anything dumb like that. You'll get access to a private RSS feed if you support us on Patreon. You put it in your favorite podcast app and then bam, you can listen to our weekly bonus podcast party chat, the podcast versions of The Deepest Dives, MinMax interviews, Max spoilers, and you get the MinMax show podcast a day earlier than everybody else. So please help support independent games media, head over to patreon.com slash minmax with two N's.